All right, it looks like we are live. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Long time no see. We are back with another episode of Films and Fandoms with Kaylee. Now, I'm speaking a bit quiet because I am at my new apartment, which is why we took a couple of weeks off because down on the design moving, I was getting my stuff situated. So I was, because that's why we were gone a couple of weeks, but I am back and I am with Alex. She's Hi. got ice cream. <laughs> Yep. And I got actually it's it's custard candies. I love custard. It's well, Freddy's custard. Mm -hmm. Back where I used to live, there's an ice cream place called Meadows. They had the frozen custard and I loved it there. It's so good. Mm-hmm. So, as I said, we are back. New episode of Films and Fandoms with Kaylee. Before I get into this episode, I want to thank... I'm going to say I can hear a TV. <laughs> Oops. Right, some... There we go. Okay. Turn it down. <laughs> I would like to thank... Our sponsor, our parent company, Napco.org, our electrical consultant, WestPASystems.com. And you can check out my website, KayleeSantelActing.com. All that will be in the episode description if you're watching the video later. So today we are back talking about leverage. We are going to be talking Season one, episode five, the bank shot job. <laughs> yeah, I'm already laughing because I know I am too. Because it's, uh, it's like so good. There's some, there's some crazy that happens. Oh, there is. And we'll get into that. Like, legit. yes, well, it's mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is like one of my top, like. Top five favorite episodes. Of yeah, all five I'd seasons. say it's up there for me too. This, this, this scene is for me. This episode was like, just very friend. beautifully shot, especially and with very, like, the color graded like, because it's a lot of like bright or it's like contrast because it they're in a desert town, so there's like the contrast with like the heat. And like yeah, the whole like, scene just we, looks like it is hot, which granted, yeah. <laughs> freaking it 110 was. degrees outside. But yeah, it was 110 degrees when they shot that. <laughs> and freaking Oklahoma was wearing jeans that day. Well, to be fair, a lot of people are in actually in desert climates. They don't get a lot of them will wear like very light fabrics that cover the whole body to avoid sun yeah like like Which elliot's uh makes sense like plaid but, shirt uh, i could tell that it was really fucking thin. oklahoma of course he wears jeans i know i mean come on he's freaking because he can't wear shorts he's running around in shorts working around equipment just we have a brother learned that lesson working well, freaking lawn mowing <laughs> true my brother does landscaping and he has to wear jeans because every time he wears shorts his legs get all cut up from the rocks so yeah i actually there was one time i was mowing our, our yard and i wore free pants with cowboy boots because <laughs> i knew <laughs> don't cowboy you dare <laughs> yeah because they came Seriously? up kind of high on my yeah like right here to mm -hmm. protect my legs from the pieces of stick that were flying out at me. But I still got kind of, like, bruised up a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. 
very minor like injuries. Like I'm very accident prone if you haven't noticed. Oh I know. <laughs> I'm accident prone. No, yeah, because you hurt your wrist. In the most stupidest way possible. Oh yeah, I wanna tell the audience. Yeah, and I I told you. What did I tell you? I pulled a fucking Oklahoma. You did. That's what she texted <laughs> totally me was. Did. Well, I mean. <laughs> and you're like, what did you do? I'm like, I hurt myself. And she's like, how? I'm like, scooping ice cream. And she's she like, said, um, how did you do that? I'm like, I don't really know. It just happened. And then the other day at work, I smacked myself with a freaking cabinet door. <laughs> In the head. Oh, uh, yeah. Kill. Sorry, I was pulling up. I was pulling up the. I was looking at the text. Yeah, it's, yeah. He texted me saying, "I might have taken a page from fucking Oklahoma's book of what not to do." I was like, "What did you do?" <laughs> and then you were like, "Yes, how?" I was like, "Did you hurt yourself?" And you're like, "Yup." <laughs> what did you do? Spray my wrist scoop in ice cream. <laughs> Yeah, the cow in all caps. <laughs> all right. Yeah, but it still hurts. It's like right here where it hurts. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it just sends the shock of pain down my arm. And this mm-hmm. is my writing hand. I'm right handed. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I I'm right handed too. I heard, yeah, I heard it again just a little bit ago. I don't even know how. Honestly, I do not know. It's weird. All right. All right, let's actually get on with this episode. Uh, so. no. All right, you good? Yep. Okay. Here we go. Pretty keen in a second, dude. Okay, so the summary. All right, so this is the bank shot job. And the summary for this episode is a job taken down a corrupt county judge in a desert town goes wrong when the leverage team ends up in the middle of a bank robbery and Nate and Sophie get taken hostage along with their mark. And it's up to the team to not only save the con, but help the two amateur bank robbers. So, uh, as I believe they said in the audio commentary, uh, you know a show's jumped the shark when they do their hostage episode. <laughs> and so basically, when they were like writing out the season, they're like, why not make our, like, why not shoot our hostage episode first? <laughs> Get it out of the way. <laughs> so that's, that's how this episode came to be. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep the volume down because my apartment walls are kind of thin and I don't want to disturb my neighbors because it is nine at night where I'm at. So <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. But anyways, the <clears throat> the director for this episode is Dean Devlin and the writers for this episode are John Rogers, Chris Downey, in Amy Bird, and this episode aired December 29th, 2008. And even though this is, see, there's like three orders to this to season one the shooting order, which is the order that they shot the episodes in. The order in which the episodes were actually released and the DVD order, which was the original attending or the original order that was intended when they wrote the episodes. So, and this is episode eight on the DVD. So it's kind of confusing. And I still don't understand why TNT changed the order. I mean, shooting yeah, schedule, I, I get, I that gets mixed up all the time, but. Yeah, I, I would have kept it the same order, honestly. 
That's the way that they shot the episodes. Or, not the first episode they shot. It's the first episode they shot when they came back from shooting the pilot. Because they shot the pilot, released it, but then the writer strike happened. So they were off for a couple months. And it was when they came back to shoot the rest of the season because they had gotten picked up for another season. They shot this this episode first. Yeah, this was the first episode back after the writer's strike, which I thought that little tidbit was kind of cool. And as basically what the writer's strike was, for those of you who don't know, in 2008, there was a period where... uh, writers went on strike which meant no one was writing anything so if you noticed a lot of the shows that are from like that period a lot of the seasons got shortened um i first had heard of this through supernatural because season it was season five yeah, because they cut it short. Yeah, they usually do a typical And that's season why anywhere. season five yeah. ended the way it ended was because they didn't know if they were coming back. Yeah. Um, a typical season, isn't it like 20, 20 to 22 episodes? Sometimes depending on the show, yeah. On, yeah. Depending on the show, and yeah. That episode, that season of Supernatural, there was only 19 yes. I thought was 19 like episodes. Nope. 19. Um, mm-hmm. And then on this one, there was only, like, how many? There's only that? 13. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, only 13. Yeah. Well, with that season of Supernatural, they were going into the next season. So that's why there was, like, 17 or 18, maybe 19 that were filmed. The last two were for the next season. And then uh, the writer's yeah, strike happened, yeah. and they're like, what do we do? Yeah. I don't know. And right, then, so. yeah, it's like, because they weren't getting having their voices heard, and it's like, come on. Yeah. You talk it out, and you don't go on strike. Please. Well, actually, the strike was them talking it out. Yeah. The strike was them talking but, it out. Yeah, it's like, come on. So... Anyways, continuing on to the actual episode. So we open at a desert town and you can see just by looking at the customers inside the bank, it's hot. Because they are in one. Yeah, it's like to me it reminds me of like a desert like completely like mid like Old West Ghost style. Town. Yeah. Ghost like, Town. I'm, I'm talking like, well, not really Ghost Town, but Arizona. Tombstone, Arizona. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> because it's in the middle of nowhere, the freaking desert, and it's hot as crap in there, and full cowboy outfit, pouring sweat. Yeah, and Sophie's in this. Or is that a customer service counter? She has a lovely dress on, but she has, like, very aggressive pearls. I know. It doesn't match. It doesn't match the style of her dress. It doesn't really match. Her dress is more Maybe that's the character. Maybe that's the character she's playing. Could be. And she's wearing really, really cute glasses. She does have cute glasses. That's the first thing I noticed, and I didn't write that Mm -hmm. down, but was, was her glasses. So Nate walks in, he has a like a chocolate brown suit and, and has a white jacket <laughs> and a black cowboy hat. Which oh, so I recently watched Librarians. I finally watched finally. it. Finally. I know, finally. Not the point. 
But does Nate's hat not look like Jake's that he wore in the first episode? It does. Or maybe it's just because it's Actually, a black cowboy hat. No, I mean, it's bent up at the same, the same way. And it's probably just the cowboy hat style. Because you really no, think Jake's... Cause... Jake Stone's Oklahoma man's not going to wear a freaking proper cowboy yeah. hat. I will prove you wrong. Hold on. I'm going to prove you wrong. I look like the same hat. What are you, what are you grabbing? Hold on. Alex is grabbing something. <laughs> oh my god, this not being loud thing's already getting annoying. <laughs> Told you. It's ah. not bent the same way. Oh, never mind then. Yeah, it's all right. Violent. Moving on. <laughs> I proved you wrong. Ah! All right, right, all right. <laughs> and behind him is, or behind Nate is, Judge Roy, played by Michael O'Neill, who is one of those. Oh, it's that guy. <laughs> people. As in, usually, rip, you see his face and you're like, oh, I saw him in this. Because he played, like, good people before this. So, he's playing a major douche in this one. He's got a very punchable face, mind you. Mm-hmm. And... Though after this role, he started playing more bad guys. Most notably, he played a shooter on Grey's Anatomy. No way. That's not mm -hmm. the same guy. Mm -hmm. What? It is the same guy. Look it up. Look up my colonial. Or... Look up his iron TV page. He's the one who shot the hospital. So I've never seen Grey's Anatomy, but I know enough about it. <laughs> I, I know that episode that you're talking about. I look at the cast list. I'm going to find him. Oh, and I got... While she's doing that, I got... <laughs> Sorry, my camera is freaking mirrored, but I got you got two Elliots. Oh my god. You were, you were right. And and he was on an episode of The Resident. I didn't realize it. He yes, I didn't know he was on the resident, I just know Grey's Anatomy. Okay, now my brain's broken. Okay, you're okay. Do you need me to continue on? <clears throat> okay, then. Well, what the heck? All right. I didn't know that. I learned something <laughs> new. <laughs> All right, let's carry on. And Nate's also got, like, the toothpick in his mouth, because... He's trying to be he's suave he's at playing this point. a douche. Yeah, yeah. Nate usually plays bastards. No, he's being himself at this point. He is. <laughs> but he tips his hat to it. Sorry, Nathan, but... One of the young... It's true. You know, it is true. But he kind of, like, tips his hat to a young lady credited as Megan. He was oh, played by this... Megan Duffy. Or hold, hang on one second. I know we've seen you're getting to... Mm -hmm. Just walk by, but... A funny story about Megan's casting. Basically, they cast because they wanted to, or the character of Megan was cast to, like, show how, like, much of a jerk Roy was so that, like, the ending made sense. And they were, like, the cast were, like, auditioning people, and they were, like, because Megan Delphi is the casting assistant, and they were, like, looking for people like her. And so they were just like, why don't we just cast Megan? <laughs> and that's how she got the part. It's like, well, she's 
we're looking she's for who we like want her, for, but she's like she's like who are basing the role actors why not just freaking cast her exactly and she did a, a absolute amazing job mm -hmm. so carry on right, continuing on <clears throat> this next part pisses me off oh same here she's like afternoon judge roy Roy, who is obviously much older uh, than her. Hey, don't break the stuffy. Yeah. Don't break the stuffy. Sherry, I'm eating caramel m &Ms. <laughs> She has to be at least maybe She's my 19. age. She's 19. She's well, 19. I mean, she her face looks like she's about my age. Yeah. And he's like, but, yeah. hey, sweetheart. And he's and obviously, like, pushing 45 at this point, his character. And I'm like, Ugh, gross. <laughs> and I, I really wanted to punch him. Yeah. I about threw my phone mm -hmm. when I was watching this, that scene. I about chucked my phone across the room. <laughs> but he, he smacks her ass. And she just, like, you can see her, like, tense up. Then yeah. just go off as Roy's just laughing at me. Is that like he just traumatized this poor teenager or this poor young adult? <laughs> Sorry. Shit. Air did not like my throat. Hang on. Don't die. God. Sorry. Christ. Anyway. <laughs> See, that's how upset I get. I can't freaking breathe my own air. <laughs> but you can see, like, Nate standing there for a second and just looking like, you kidding me? He wants to kill. He wants to kill. He has that look of, I want to kill him, but I can't. Mm -hmm. And then Roy walks up to this guy who we learn is... Frank. And if Frank asks if there's anything he can do for him, Frank, if there's anything they can do for him, they're always like, yeah, Fred, her phone number. <laughs> and Frank then is like, it's Frank. She is 19, sir. At least he had the like the heart to yeah, call him sir out of norma like, but I mean normally that would have been a sign of respect but at this point mm -hmm. it was kind of like douche condescending <laughs> a bit a little bit yeah it would be it's Which different normalize than, I mean calling people this, out for their shitty yeah, behavior yeah in this well in this town because it's a southern town mm -hmm. kind of uh, mm -hmm. that's just the way of life. I've, I've been called ma'am before by Southern gentlemen, and it made me blush. And I I now say yes, ma'am, yes, sir, because mm -hmm. I live with my Southern grandmother. <laughs> they come down naturally. Yeah. I've tried actually refer to refrain from not using that. Only because, like, you don't know if like someone isn't comfortable with that so i try not to use it but yeah i see if it's like a southern thing that's hard to break out of break out of yeah um but i will but say normalize I calling people out for their shitty behavior especially men it is yeah, freaking 2022 Okay. Act like act like you have the sense that you actually give a crap about the person, okay. even if you don't. Treat them like, like a human being and not an object. Yes. Exactly. But also men, especially if respect twenty twenty two. If you if someone you are with if you're with like a group of people and someone in your group is doing something that is now classify as shitty behavior, call them out on it. 
Okay, Tell it is it 2022. Off. Okay. We shouldn't be doing this, that stuff anymore. Yeah, it's just, it's just act like you have the sense that people matter. Don't treat them like mm-hmm. they don't. Mm-hmm. That includes men. Call out your guys, your guy friends for catcalling women. Women. Oh, I, I, I flipped off for Calling out your other lady friends. Me. For being jerks being inappropriate. to other it's dudes. Like, Treat them like they're human, which is okay. what they are. Treat them with respect. It goes both ways. We talked about yeah. this already. Even if they're rude as crap. I've had that when I was working at Brahms. I had someone who was borderline rude to me. But I was polite. Mm-hmm. I smiled at him. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. In my head, I was thinking, I'm sorry. You're such a jerk. Mm. But I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Am I in your way? She's like, yes, you mm. are. And I just smiled at her and walked off. Yeah, normalize calling people out for their shitty behavior. Moving on. Roy's. <clears throat> Roy's then like, that's too bad. She have a younger sister. Ugh. That. Gross. That. <laughs> I'm not I, gonna get into that because I want to, that's just too I gross, want, even for me to freaking talk about. So yeah, that was pushing a boundary. He ran oh, over majorly, the boundary and went majorly, down the street. Yeah. Majorly, he went over the boundary and went down the street to the other side. And yeah, to the other boundary. I, yeah, I specifically thought when I when I saw that little bit, that little scene, I wanted to throat punch him so hard, mm. like where he would choke on his own spit and then knock him out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I totally wanted to pull an Elliot. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I texted you that, didn't I? Me too. Mm-hmm. I said, "Can I hit him?" And you're like. Yes, you can. <laughs> Didn't you? Mm-hmm. All right, continuing on. So, oh, yeah. so the he keeps blocking his Nate shares a look with Sophie, and Sophie says, "Go get him, Tiger." So Frank then takes Roy and Nate cute. down to. His, it was kind of cute. Frank. Roy and Nate go to the security deposit boxes. And Frank hands a box to Roy. And asks if he needs anything else. Roy says to call his ball. He'll call his boss. Then tells Frank to get the hell out of his face. <laughs> so maximum level. Creep and maximum level douche. It's basically yeah, I don't feel bad her. what happens to him. In fact, it yeah. is satisfying well, okay. as hell what like, happens to him. Yeah, it's basically like they made a deal with the devil, and the devil is wanting to club guys and make deal. make them pay up. Mm-hmm. And what happens next? Which devil always I, gets I, 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 Yeah, I agree. That crossroads deal has come, payment is due, and they get what they deserve. Mm-hmm. And yes, that was a supernatural reference. <laughs> well, and then he, librarians also has a devil's deal too. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. I freaking I love Jenkins in that episode though. <laughs> I know exactly Wait, what Cassandra. About. Oh my god. We just walk with oh Cassandra my. into the party. <laughs> oh, goodness. But then him saving the lits. Yep. 
It gets kind of come to think of it. They literally beat the devil. <laughs> literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, technically, in both shows, because true. <clears throat> the devil gets punched. In Supernatural, and Eve outsparts the devil in the librarians. Because you gotta admit, that was cool. Eve making her deal that the devil could be beat, then sending in Jenkins because he's immortal to go get the lits. Yep. And breaking the deal because, like, the deal's broken. Mm -hmm. It's like she's made a promise to the devil himself, but then had her fingers crossed behind her back. A bit, yeah. Basically, is what happened. Mm -hmm. I continue it on because they're talking about leverage, not librarians, though that may be an option in the future. That's going to be fun. So after Frank leaves the safety deposit boxes, Nate says that the the trick to living in a one-horse town is being the horse. Which I got the expression wrong because the idea behind like a one horse town and being the horse is that you have to like share everything or you have to share the horse it's basically well actually it's like you have to share responsibility for everything true but with roy saying he's the horse i guess that could mean that he is the one controls who has access to the horse yeah, or who has access to, not necessarily the horse, but in this, in a physical way, would be his skill set, aka mm-hmm. the team. He can, he's the gatekeeper at this point. Um, yeah, he is kind of the gatekeeper. Way. He's the one that controls everything. Yeah, does that make sense? When I say gatekeeper, <clears throat> you know what that means, right? It's like... <laughs> the guardian (laughs) in a way yeah true all right moving on so nate opens a briefcase full of cash and where he feels it's more than they discussed and just it won't it won't be a problem nate says it's not a problem it's just more risk for him so he's gonna have to up his fee he's gonna have to adjust his fee and he has like a God, the southern accent. It raises his fee to twenty percent. Roy negotiates for fifteen and won't have Nate arrested for extortion. Nate's like, well, you know what they say, laundering's a dirty business. Roy leaves and Nate takes the money and puts it in the briefcase. So then outside, we see Hardison and Parker are in a pretty shitty van. They're sweating, but Parker's not as she's tearing up paper. And she and like, it, it, <laughs> it's funny, because the way that she's doing it, she's looking right at him as, he, as she does it. <laughs> yeah, because Hardison <laughs> starts, Harrison starts bitching, saying they got attacked to Nate and no more rip deals because they take too damn long. Which, for those of you who don't know what a rip deal is, is basically a theft where one party leaves with the money and whatever else is a part of the deal, leaving the other party with nothing. So, say it's a jewelry heist and you're selling off the diamonds. One party takes not only the cash, but the diamonds as well. And goes leaving the other party probably to the gaps. So that's just how it works. And so that kind of sets up what con they're doing. Yeah. Which this is the first time we see this where it's like they're already on a job. Yeah. And we basically see into the the middle of it. Yeah. We're technically the end. Yeah. 
but it's like we walk in and it's already, already happened. It's and basically we're getting like, the end. Basically, we're getting <laughs> Act Three of what would normally be. Like, so it's supposed to be like we're the starting start of the with con. Act Three of what another episode would have been. Yeah. So Harrison says they've been in one for two weeks. They've been in crappy hotels, in at crappy diners. In two weeks, have a soul soaked dry, and it's 107 degrees. And who lit and asks who lives where it's 107 degrees? <clears throat> Which I kind of agree. I can barely tolerate freaking 90. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really mind it. It's just for me, it gets like a little heat. too warm. Yeah. Yeah, I actually prefer the cold, believe it or not. Because I'm right in the middle of the heartland, and it, it got up to yeah. 106 yesterday. Oh, my God. Yeah, freaking 106 degrees, and I'm, like, pouring sweat in scrub, <laughs> walking out to my car at the end of, oh of my the day. God. And I was like, oh, uh, scrubs like, are the worst. But they're comfortable, though. But I was pouring sweat. They don't breathe. <laughs> No, they do not. But Parker, yeah, oh, I, I relate. It's like I agree with Hardison. It's like <laughs> I it's, do too. It's too much. Mm-hmm. Too much. Nope. Yeah, no, sir. But Parker says that wants not so bad, and she likes it. Hardison <laughs> just looks at Parker and it's like he had <laughs> like, and had because he had to retask two satellites to get a lousy internet connection, and it took more than an hour to torrent the last episode of Doctor Who. Parker's like, hey, I think we're downloading wrong, which is the first <laughs> Doctor Who reference. Is this the first one? I believe this is the first second. Doctor Who reference. Yeah, first second first one. one. Yeah, no, it's the first one of this season. But yeah, it what is was the, first the other one? one? Of the, um, no, that was a Star Trek reference. Sorry. <laughs> no, I would say that was a Star Trek because there wasn't any. Yeah, so yeah, this, this one is was the first Doctor, Doctor Who, Who yeah, reference. Yeah, this is the, our like what fifteenth or sixteenth like geeky reference yeah. overall. Yeah, but this 16th. is the first Doctor Who reference we get. I know, and when I heard him say that, I immediately pa- I paused it. And I started laughing. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote down Age of the Geek because I mentioned I wrote <laughs> Doctor Who mentioned. Age of the Geek. <laughs> but, okay, so here's why you shouldn't illegally download stuff. Because how basically a movie makes money is by people either streaming it, buying the DVDs, or attending a movie theater and paying for the movie ticket Yeah, to go see these movies. And by viewership. So, like, or if you're watching TV. Or some combination of them. Exactly. So, if you download it illegally, that means nothing's going back into the production. And sometimes um, the cast and crew rely on these profits from streaming movie tickets and viewership and you get a pay their wages check, don't get paid paycheck. and it's like yeah and then they end up broke because of it so piracy is, yeah. is bad it's yeah. like i would That's rather why, buy the dvd i would yeah. rather buy the dvd dvd so they could get a little portion of what i pay yeah than nothing at all yeah and it's like i know a recent but a big thing that came out of this was Scarlett Johansson from the movie or for the movie Black Widow. She, the way her contract was negotiated, she's supposed to get a percentage from, I think the box office, or she's supposed to get a set amount to star in Black Widow. And then on top of that, she was supposed to get the percentage a percentage of from 
buying the movie on Disney Plus. So the Disney Plus streams. She's supposed to get a percentage of the profits from that. And she didn't. Oh, that sucks. That's not cool. I think I think she did win that case, but the issue with that case was if they could get away with screwing a big name actor out of their contract, what does that mean for someone a bit lower on the totem pole, so to speak? Yeah, like uh, like a fledgling actor or something like that. They or get even off like even more. Crew. Yeah, and they get ripped off even more. FX, the FX departments and the Marvel yeah. productions. I've seen that's been going around lately with the release yeah. of Miss Marvel. They're talking about like, how like bad the conditions are, working long hours, and meaning almost impossible deadlines. Yeah, so, like what people don't realize when they commit piracy like that is that those people who made they're taking money said from produ- the low yeah, on the said production board. yeah said production are working 14 15 hour days sometimes 16 hour days with little sleep to get to make the movie out yeah and so you're basically saying screw you when you do yeah. this so from spend the money submit the only uh, I have seen though. See, there's weird catch twenty two because I know there's been a movement to boycott Aquaman two because yeah. of Amber Heard. So, I mean, I would boycott it anyway because I looked, I watched the trailer for it, and it sucked. Yeah. It looks cheap. Yeah. It looks cheap. Yeah. So that's well, that's why I wouldn't watch it. I would rather watch well, honestly, I would rather watch the new Doctor Strange movie in the theaters than mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Well, I did see the new Doctor Strange movie I and mean, it was pretty good. I'm gonna have to wait until it comes out on DVD so I can buy it. <laughs> it was really good. Scary and fucked up, but it was good. It was scary, I'm freaking telling you. All right, so continuing on. It's like, just be mindful of the people who made said production and actually treat them like they're humans. That's what my takeaway from that Mm -hmm. was. And advocate for better working conditions for everyone involved in the production. Yep. All right, continuing on. So, even though Harrison's bitching about how hot it is, Parker still takes her butane torch. I like to put the paper so in cool. the trash can. And Hardison's looking at her like, really, woman? It's You're like, lighting a fire in this hot ass man. <laughs> yeah, he's, well, it's, it's that and mixed with a little bit of fear, I think. Because yeah, she's got that. Fire. Yeah, she's got that, <laughs> uh, no emotion, like, straight face, mm-hmm. poker face that. Uh, people with autism often get I've gotten it before where I'm like straight face but I'm happy about something and she just tilts it and just like that straight face mm-hmm. scaring him down and I'm like I want to know if Beth broke character when, when they were filming that scene she might have <laughs> I would have been like lighting it and I would have looked down and I'm like that's hot yeah yeah Alright, continuing on. So Hardison then goes on comms and asks how the breakdown's coming. And then see Elliot is loading up a pretty shitty truck with a like he's carrying a native statue. Yeah, it's a wooden. Don't know what the cover was. 
but they're uh, see I'm pretty sure it's native yeah it's like it, it was a wooden it's, Indian but and I heard, yeah. yeah yeah immediately after I saw that I had to pause it because uh the song Kalijah by Hank Williams popped into my mind oh I think he did talked about the yeah the wooden Indian mm-hmm. that's what it looked like and I'm like <laughs> I started so giggling funny. because because it popped into my head it's also funny is there's also a cardboard cut out of Parker and I think Sophie it's hard to tell, but it does look like Sophie on the back of the oh, chocolate. Yeah. It's like okay, and other things. As Elliot yeah. says, the fake addresses are shut down. Post office boxes are closed. Phones are cleared. And in five minutes, they never existed. So this would be like what you would see off screen normally. Is like them breaking down all this stuff. Yeah, them packing up everything, which is kind of well, funny. Like, they're doing the, it's, it's, they're doing act three. It's a, yeah, it's a little, it's a little meta for me because it's like, it they're breaking the third wall, <laughs> the fourth wall. Yeah, it's, and it's like, they're doing the back, the background stuff while actually acting, which is hilarious, <laughs> which I thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. So Very hard meta, then which I love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it, love going meta. Hard to say that as ever comes if Elliot wants him to call the Delgado family and tell them the good news. Elliot says he wants to do it once they clear once he clears county lines. Then Elliot gets in the truck and says, I wish we can do more than bankrupt that corrupt son of a bitch. There's nothing fun than Elliot saying son of a bitch. Well, it was like Elliot met Dean yeah. Winchester, and Elliot's it's like that. Guy. And, was, <laughs> and he got growly with it, too. He did got growly with growly. it, and I thought... He did get a bit growly. Yeah. And I'm like, CK had way too much fun with that. <laughs> well, I didn't get to drive an old truck. True. <laughs> and I want that truck. Mm. That's like my dream car, is it? It's either a really so. freaking badass, like, <laughs> Dodge Charger. Like, the one that he, with the... Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that later, one. That, that Charger. Later, yeah, that he Charger. has an orange yeah. Dodge Charger. No, Challenger. Yeah. It's a Challenger. Either, yeah, it's a Challenger. Uh, either that one or a beat-up old pickup truck with a really kick ass engine. Say so he has a truck, too. Yep. He always gets the really cool cars and makes me happy. Yeah. So then Nate walks onto the floor of the bank and you can see in the background Roy talking with Frank and Nate tips his hat to Sophie. Roy joins Nate and then the camera it like slows down and Nate's analyzing everything. And it's and almost like it's, it's almost like Leverage's version of Spidey Sense. He's like Something's off here. But, but he, he notices. Know what. Yeah. He notices a young twitchy boy who we find out is named Michael. He was played by Devon Gray. And the man beside him who we find out is his dad, Derek, who was played by Mark Dewar. And Nate stops, and you can see, like, sort of the gears turning as Roy asks, like, what's the matter? Even Sophie's trying to not, like, let it go. Like, get out. Let it go. (laughs) It's like, basically ignore the... It's like that... He's literally, like, like five feet out of the door. Yeah, it's like, don't... You know the old saying, like... Don't watch the train wreck because it's hard to look away. Gosh, That's yeah. basically what's going on right now. There's a train wreck about to happen and Nate's staring at it. And yeah. Sophie's telling him to turn around and walk away. Yeah. But he's not listening. Yeah. Because Nate says, we got to get out of here. And I was like, I thought that's what we were doing. And Harson's like at the front window and he's like, like, what is he waiting for? Like, what's he doing? 
Sophie stands up and she's like trying to find herself an exit because she's like, shit's about to go down. I need to get out. If Nate's not going to leave, then I'm going to find an exit. But an older security guard notices Michael and Derek and walks up to them after spawning a gun. Because oh, Derek has a shotgun. Though it's not like out, it's like hidden beneath the desk. Yeah. Or the counter, sorry. But then the guard, t- but, but Sophie's exit's cut off because the guard steps in front of her so she can't leave. Yeah, and I immediately went, oh, crap. (laughs) Because then the guard told Derek to step back from the counter, then draws his gun, which then causes Michael to put a gun on the guard, and Derek to grab the shotgun and yell, it's a robbery. And this would be the moment, as they say, shit hits the fan. (laughs) This is, like, very fast-paced. Like, the episode kind of goes by, like, in a snap because it is so fast-paced. Yeah. Because this is, what, ten minutes into the episode? Five? Yeah, it's ten minutes in, and immediately crap goes wrong, and it goes wrong quick. Yeah. Yeah. And it, like, doesn't stop after this. Yeah, that, that... that gasoline's lit and the it's about to explode. Yeah, because as we talked about, gasoline lights very quickly. Yep. So and Derek's yelling, he doesn't want to hurt anyone. So if he clears it, Nate and Nate's just like, here we go. He's like, crap. Yep. And then Derek yells for Nate and Roy to back away from the door. So back outside, Parker's like, you gotta be kidding me. Arjun's like, oh hell no. <laughs> I love that. He's like, oh O's, hell no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Because his O's sound like ah. Uh, because that's just the way Hardison speaks. So he's like, oh hell no. As And like, it's getting to the driver's seat. Yep. And Elliot's dropping is like, I knew it went too smooth. <laughs> the fact that Elliot knows something went is wrong. The farther. Yeah, well, he hears it on the comms. Yeah, he's like, I knew this went too but, smooth. And it, yeah, he heard it and then he knew in his head. He's like, mm-hmm. no. Yeah. So then that made me giggle. I could see the gears turning in his head and that made me laugh. I'm like, he knows. Mm-hmm. He knows it went too smooth. It mm-hmm. is, and they're they're screwed. Yeah, because like, had Nate walked out that door, the con would have been over. Yeah, and they would have been safe. But right. he screwed up and didn't. Full. Well, hold on. There's an explanation for that here in just a minute. So I'm gonna continue on so we can get to it. So back inside, Michael orders the guard to lock the door, and Derek gets everyone from behind the counter and orders, orders everyone on the floor. And then Derek even like gets Megan to empty all the tills and put it in the bag. Nate gets on the floor and whispers, to, like, get out now. Garth's like, is he talking to us? Parker's like, An unmarked van across the street from a bank that's being robbed? Yeah, I think he's talking to us. (laughs) Which I mean, that would be a logical conclusion in Parker's eye. And it is a logical conclusion. True. It'd be like, that's the getaway car. Van from across the street from a bank robbery. We need to get the hell out. Yep. So Hardison makes it to the driver's seat and is like, buy more feet and it would have been clear. The hell was he thinking? And Parker's like, don't be an idiot, Hardison. Hardison's like, Hardison's like, what? Parker says, Sophie was still in there. Oh. 
hard. She just nods said, like, break the course, and then peels out of the bank. But <laughs> the freaking grinding gears. So this van was a manual, the van that they use. And Otis is actually the one driving. Oh, and uh, I heard, I heard the, the grinding of the gears. Oh, that is because that, Otis that did not know how to drive a stick, so he had to learn <laughs> in like ten minutes. Which you learned really? Yeah, he had to learn in like ten minutes how to <laughs> how to drive a freaking stick. Oh, that poor boy. Feel bad for him. But also, what's interesting is like Parker knows that like she may not understand the whole nuance of the Nate Sofer relationship, but I think by this point, because this episode was supposed to be later than it originally yeah. was, by this point Parker's like, okay, like we're a team. There's something we stick yeah, there's together. something special. Yeah. It's like there's something special with them, but we're together there's still basically there's still a slight family. disconnect between everybody yeah they're together but not like a family yet they're getting to know each other a little bit further they're all in their standard that they're a team and everyone comes back who goes out yeah so in parker's mind Nick she sees okay nate stayed because he didn't want to leave Sophie's without sophie there. because we all go in we all go out like that's how this works yep in actuality what at least i think is nate always has to be the hero so he stayed so we can help sophie and keep an eye on sophie yeah, because he, he, loves about her. Her. he loves her. Yeah, he cares a lot about her, which it shows in the fact that he, he paused. And who does he look at first? Sophie. Sophie. He turns around. He looks. He makes eye contact with her to make sure mm-hmm. that she's okay. This is like, okay, I got the, like, I got, like, Parker Hurst and Elliot are out of the bank. They're safe. Sophie can't get out of the bank because her exit got cut off. So I need to stay so I can help her find an exit. In any way that I possibly can. And to keep her safe. All right, so continuing on. So back inside the bank, Derek's counting the money as Michael has again pointed at people in the bank. And Derek's saying like they don't have enough money. And Michael's like, Michael reveals they're running out of time and is like, what do we do? Which of course Nate's senses are tingling again. Cause like that's suspicious. It's like, wait a minute, there's something going on here. I'm gonna go yeah. investigate. <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it listen for what else is going on here. Derek then takes Megan over to the vault and orders her to open the safe. But then Megan reveals that it's on a timer and it can only be opened certain times of the day. Which that's sort of hint too that these guys are amateurs. <laughs> One They wouldn't realize that. They're counting the money. Two I promise I do not do this, <laughs> but a lot of safes have timers on them. <clears throat> not only the managers know the codes and they can only be opened at certain times of the day. Basically when they haul, um, but when they like haul the money out, to take it to i think another spot but yeah yeah yeah. either to the teller counter out to the guard truck the armored truck or 
to trade it out this with is the government. Thing. Yeah. It's the only three times that that thing is opened. Yeah. And so someone like Megan would not be, who is just a teller, would not be able to open the safe. Which, had Derek and Michael cased the bank earlier, they would have known that and probably not hit the bank. Or waited yep. until the manager was there. So that's sort of strike two. Or red flag number two. Now, like, something's suspicious here. Derek asks if there's anyone that can open it. Meg says only Megan says only a man only a manager can open it. And Roy like slides his briefcase under the table. And Derek takes Megan back to the floor and she gets down bump everyone else, but she like does like feel bad that she couldn't get the safe open. So, like, I'm sorry. It. It's written on her face. And we actually explains okay. it. She's like, I don't know. The managers have the code. But they're not willing to listen to her. Oh. At they're desperate. Point. Yeah. Well, that's they're not listening to Megan. They just, she can't do anything. Is what it comes down to. So then Derek ordered, then orders everyone to empty out their pockets. And it just kind of like, like, give them your stuff. Yep. And Artisan is driving the van away, and it's this cool shot is you see like the cops. Sorry, my camera is like mirrored, so I'm trying to like <laughs> do this, but the cops drive past. And then the way, so like this is the camera. The camera is like on the cop cars, jab it past, but then it zooms to Hardison and Parker driving away. Like the camera's on like pivot on the hood of the car, which I must say is very creative. That was actually kind of cool mm -hmm. to see. Yeah, and Parker suspects someone trips the, tripped the silent alarm, which that's what they're trained to do. Yep, and it's a little button tab in the in the cash tray. When they lift oh, yeah. it up, it it it's like a yeah. pressure sen pressure sensor, and it goes off, and it's a silent alarm, and it immediately alerts authorities that hey, something bad's happened. Get here now. So then back inside the bank, Roy tells Nate that these guys don't know what they're doing, then suggests he should talk to them, make them listen to reason. And Nate's like, oh yeah, and get us both shot. Roy says he's got killers he's standing smart. in front of him. Yeah, he's being a smart ass. Which one is, isn't he? Let's be fair. Okay. <laughs> it's always a smart ass, you know this. True. <laughs> But Roy says he's got killers standing in front of him in court every day, and these guys ain't them. Which Nate agrees. Which is also, like, red flag number three. Like, okay, so these guys, like, didn't plan this properly. Don't know what they're doing. And don't have enough money so like this is just another thing added on like this ain't your typical bank robbers and we do find out why uh the elliot so there's like a group of people blocked off the caution tape and one of the cops elliot just freaking walks right underneath the caution tape and just stands there because there's like a drop off to go to the bank and Elliot's gone gone past the tape of the cop cell and I'm like you can't be here and it's like tell me what's going on in there and the cops like tells Elliot like you 
can't do that. This is an active crime scene. Ellie just turns around and growls out, I'm not talking to you <laughs> with this stare right here. Yeah, the, the eyes, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even this one. No, no, not that mm -hmm. one. That's history's work, but it's this one with the eyes that scare people. He's doing that thing. He's doing that thing. Then Ellie turns back around and asks, like, how many there are. And he has to hide his answer because boy is next to him. And so it's still uncovered. He's like, yeah, you're right. Clearly amateurs, these two. Younger one looks like he's never handled a gun before. No, it's like, church blow hard right next to you. I was laughing because he's basically trash talking the cops, and I'm like, the local PD at this point. I'm like, dude, you're about to get arrested if you don't shut your mouth. Now look, it's Elliot's first time in jail, so. True. Good <laughs> point. Or in handcuffs, for that matter. <laughs> It was right there. It was right there. I'm sorry. Or oh, just me. Just me. I'll get to the, the whole Elliot and handcuffs thing later. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm so ready to season two. Right That'll be a season two. That'll be a season two thing. Because you know what Sam I'm talking about. So we'll get to that then. But anyways, it's like, yeah, amateurs. Yeah, yeah definitely amateurs. That would make them dangerous. You know, it's like, all right, two guys, both armed. Now they're a criminal mastermind. You want me in there? And the guy's like, sir, we can't have you going inside the bank. So go inside the bank. And Nate tells Elliot to sit tight and see where their head's at. And it's like, all right, you're a call boss. And the cop leaves. <laughs> and then Elliot leaves and the cop's like, thank you. Finally, this ass listened to me. <laughs> okay, but the fact that Elliot called Nate boss was actually kind of cute. Oh, I mean, yeah. But it, well, it actually does reveal a bit more about Elliot's whole, like, like, he almost... Because oh if you think about it with who Elliot is, he's always had someone who gives him orders. True, he's been a soldier. Military, like his yeah. dad. Yeah, and then Mar the military. The army. Yeah, and then the army. Moreau. Moreau. And now Nate. Yep. And even you can count his PMCs that he worked for too. As people giving him orders. So, like, he's always had someone giving him orders. So, like, to, in his mind, Nate's the one in charge because he's the mastermind of this group. So, if Nate tells him to stand down, he's going to stand down. Whether he wants to or not. Because yeah, you know damn well Elliot would go and find a way into that bank. Hell or high water. True. He would find a... He would even climb through a freaking vent to get in. To... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. 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 No, no. I'm, I'm focusing. We'll deal with that later. <laughs> Moving on. I'm sorry. No, I'm not. I, guess... I know. So, back inside the bank, Michael's freaking out because it's getting close to 5 o'clock. But Derek's like, I know it's almost 5 o'clock. Go count the money. We'll be okay. And kind of shoves Michael over to where the bag is. 
So that's also like four. That's like red flag four. That like something's up. Yeah, they're needing this money for some other reason. By this time. And yeah, it's like, what's going on? Something bad's going to happen. I don't know what. And the place is surrounded. Yep. Mind you. That's, that's also five. Or I guess it kind of goes into, into one of it. Like, they don't have enough money. But yet they're trying There's to get more money reason. by a deadline. Even though the place is surrounded by cops. And they're not worried about getting out. They're worried about getting this money. They need it by a time. They didn't case the place. Excuse me. And they don't know what they're doing. So that's like adding on to like the list. Yeah. It, to me, it, it shows that they're amateurs at this yeah. point. It's like they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They're going to get then, caught. Yeah, and Roy stands up and Derek's like, yeah. Roy stands up and Derek's like, what the hell are you doing? Get back down on the ground. Roy then plays the, you know who I am card, which do she move? He and Derek an says he doesn't that. care. Yeah. Well, hold on, that plays in a bit here. Roy says he should, he should because he's the guy that can make everything go away. And all I had to do was walk out the front door. And Derek's like, is that so? Right then, it's like, the thing is, I'm the law in this town. That fellow with the badge, that's Bill. He works for me. One phone call, he and this guys will hop back in the car and drive away. No questions asked. And then, like, let me talk to you for a minute, son. <laughs> do she move? I think it's like he's five trying, at he's this trying point. To play, yeah, he's trying to play the hero at this point. I'm like, well, no. Oh. Well, yes, but also, no. Oh, I'll go into that in a bit of a minute. But Roy then takes the top hips forward, and Derek's telling him to stay where he's at. And since Roy isn't by Nate, Nate takes this opportunity to check in with Sophie. Like, how are you doing? So and that like, was sweet. Just peachy. That was How adorable, though. Yeah. And it's like something weird's going on here. So it was like, you caught that too. Yeah, and it's like, like they both know that something's off at this point. Yeah. They're like, it's like when we the need guys, to get here now. Yeah, because yeah. Nate's like. Well, one, you hear, like, one guy said they didn't have enough, but they need more cash, and it's not to pay rent. So if it's like, she, so if it says she doesn't care what it's for, they need to get out of here. Bitch plays into who, like, Sophie is. She always, like, she makes her own exit. And her thing, when a situation gets too hot, is to get out. Because that's yeah. sort of, that's better training is to get out. But for Nate, this is one of his scenarios, and this is a puzzle to him, and he always has to solve the puzzle. Which is just part of who Nate is. He always has to play the puzzle and he always has to figure out the puzzle so we can solve it and decide best the best course of action from there. So each piece of information that Nate gets is a puzzle piece that he puts together in his head, which is what he's doing. Each of these pieces of information he's getting, he's figuring out that like something bigger is going on here and we need to help. Because that's what he suggests next is like, if he's like, if we help these guys get what they want, 
then we can get everybody out of here safely and nobody will get hurt. And I don't want to leave our fate to the one volunteer SWAT team. So I was like, all right, what's the plan, Stan? Meanwhile, Derek's been arguing with Roy, and Derek is buying this sweetheart deal Roy's offered him. Because the truth will come out. And Roy's like, the truth? The truth is what I say it is. Every story I make up about what happened in here, these little people will tell the cops. And that's how it works in this town. Now all he's got to do is walk out the front door. And Derek's like, thanks, boss. But I've been around long enough to know things don't sound easy, hardly ever are. Now sit your ass back down. So with that whole interaction and what I was kind of getting at or was trying to was starting to get to about earlier was Roy thinks he can control everybody because of his power. And because he can buy everybody. And. Yeah, he's proven wrong at this point. Yeah, but that's how he gets out. With this situation. Is because he thinks it can be a douche to everybody because everyone will be scared of him. And he has the power. Because he has the money. And at the end. That's what the team does, is they turn, essentially, the town against Roy. And also about, um, it's also this idea that people like Derek not buying sweetheart deals because they'd never gotten one without a cost. Which, personally, I wouldn't, I never believe sweetheart deals because I've never been offered one. Because everything that, like, I've ever gotten has, like, come with the cost. Now, whether I've had to, like, work for it or whether, like, something's always been lost when I've gained something. Like, that's just how my life's always worked out. So, especially, like, living in a small town... Like I did. It would make sense that someone like Derek would not buy this sweetheart deal. He knows that there's something that... He's waiting for the catch. Yeah, the... The do that's gonna come up later. If he takes this. He's, like, mulling it over in his mind. He's like, if I take Going this... Going back to that analogy earlier... Yeah. He's like, Roy's offering. If I take this deal, Roy's devil. Yeah, it's like, could it be my life? Derek's Johnny. Yeah, exactly. It's like the golden fiddle. Devil thinks because he's got the golden fiddle that it can beat Johnny and get his soul. Yep. But Johnny has the skill to beat the devil. Yep. It's like one Fiddle person game. thinks they Oh yeah. my freaking god. What? The fiddle game. The con that they do in the studio draw. It's a fiddle game. Oh yes, it is. Again. It's like <laughs> One person knows, kind of has like an expectation of what they can do. Yeah. They think they because have the power, but in reality, it's the other person. Fiddle. The fiddle game is you buy something. It's like you have the mark buy something for a lot more than it's worth. Well, in that case, it was Elliot's rights to his songs. Yeah. Well, songs. Um, it was actually yeah, Kaylin's it's- song. Yeah, it's something of it. it's basically you have somebody buy into something of val- that you deem valuable for a and lot then more you than burn them. Yeah. Yeah. Which and is kind of like the double and Johnny. You, yeah. 
you flip it on them later to yeah. Which is make them pay Johnny for does. what they did. Then in this case, the fiddle is His person. Freedom. Yep. Is the fiddle. Mm-hmm. Roy's offering Derek and Michael freedom. It's basically but, just offering them to walk away if they end this. But Derek is probably semi at least knows what he's doing and knows what like the plan is. And yeah. he doesn't need this. He doesn't need the deal. Like he doesn't need to make the deal a deal with the devil. See, I, I just said fiddle, and then like all that just came over me. <laughs> oh man, I'm laughing so hard, I'm like tearing up. <laughs> oh my god! I just continue. I'm like so giggling. Oh. Uh, so, anyways, go, going back to the episode where it goes back to where Nate is, and Nate tells us he where comes. That they cannot allow the local Leos to handle the situation and they have to get in charge of it and they have to be the police. Essentially, like we have to take control of the situation. We have to control have to reinsert control over this. Yeah. And it's like we have to basically like the, 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 what's happening right like now. the safest way to get everyone out up here safely and get us out and still do the job is to go along with what these bank robbers want and figure out what they want and how we can help them get it. Well, then Roy sits back down by Nate. Nate, once again, little shit mode, bastard. It's like, how did that uh, go for you there, Judge? <laughs> Holy <laughs> leveling. Look at him annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Like you wanted then, to throw a punch in, which is hilarious. And then we go, we're back outside and we see Parker and Harrison pull into a, like a parking lot in the bank in a black car. So they've s- s- stashed the van and found a black FBI car. Because they were an FBI jacket, so they pull up to the bank and meet Elliot, who meets them and tosses Parker a folder containing aliases. And Elliot makes a clip of "Nice ride." Well. Parker then grabs badges out of the folder and stands at the back of the car, saying, "It's embarrassing. Everyone knows you don't rob a bank without an exit strategy." Which I mean, she then hands one of the badges to Hardison and hands the folder back to Elliot, saying these two deserve to get caught. Which it kind of more like shoves the folder at Elliot's chest and gets a glare from him. Yeah, he looks kind of. He looks down briefly at the folder and then back up at her like, Are you kidding me? Really? Yeah. It was like, it was cute. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, he's so mad. He wants to hurt her, but he can't because she needs to be protected. Yeah. yeah. And Parker says, like, 42 seconds. I was like, what? Parker says to rob this bank. Like, one security guard has never fired his gun before two closed circuit cameras outside. One outside in a Glenmeter safe built in the 50s whose default combination is the birthday of the manager's wife. And all that would take 42 seconds. Which, Glenn Reader is the name of two of the writers. Melissa Glenn and Jessica Reader, which is now Jessica Grazi, who wrote The Two Horse Job together. So this is the writing oh, duo so Glenn cool. Reader. Which is also oh, the name that's... of Safe Company. We'll hear throughout. That brought what? up Carver Edlin. 
from Supernatural. It's two different, two of the creators of, like, the writers. One's a creator, one's a writer. Uh, yeah. Except in Cart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a little, uh, like, breaking. Yeah, so I'm like, boiling him. Of, yeah, it's a little, uh, Boiling Kim is another company, yeah. It's like, what the heck? Why? Mm-hmm. The hearse is like, seriously? Then Parker He's and Hearst so have to the sheriff. Walks up to Bill and is Hearst introduces himself as like Agent Leonard and Parker as Agent Elmore, which, who is, which Leonard Elmore, I guess, is a writer. So that's the reference behind that alias. And says they're taking over the crime machine. Bill introduces himself as Bill Hastings. And they're quick, as he called it in only 20 minutes ago. And Harza tells him they were coming back from a little border skirmish in a patrol unit. I come under attack from a pack of chupacabra. <laughs> Chris Bill's like, chupacabra? It's that those things are of legends. And Harson just looks at him like, Oh, you sweet summer child. Which I kind of think of like the librarians when Jake all, all gets excited about the chupacabra making jerky. <laughs> <laughs> and also that one blooper from Supernatural. Um, I think it was like season, it might have been season 12. I think it was season 12. Uh, <clears throat> the Blooper Reel. David Hayden Jones, the actor who plays um, Arthur Ketch on the series, <laughs> is one of the British Men of Letters. There's a blooper of him just saying, like, and saying, goes with your mother hunting chupacabra. <laughs> And, and then that's intercut right. to him not laughing and just straight face as Jared and Jen, Jared Padalecki and Judson Ackles are just dying over Bush, yeah, making fun young. of him over his pronunciation of Chupacabra. And then he says it again. Yeah, he says it again with the fake British accent. He can't get it right. And then just, like, just he just starts, he snores. He does one of these. It turns Wait, away fun and fact. starts laughing. Fun fact about that blooper that I got from David Hayden Jones himself when I met him a few years ago. Because I asked him about this blooper when I met him for my autograph. I have the painting in my room that he signed. But he said that he didn't know that was happening because it's like two <laughs> separate things. Two separate things. So he didn't know I guess they played like the recording or something. So they could like have something to react to. And so the reason why he wasn't reactive because he didn't know it was happening. And it was it was editing basically Uber. They edited it to make it seem like it was happening at the same time when in reality it wasn't. He didn't actually see that until he watched the blooper reel because they have to send out they have to send out the blooper reel to the actors beforehand to get their, to their get approval. approval basically oh. to make them look like idiots which i mean oh that makes it so much better in principle i mean i guess that makes sense like you would want control over how much of an ass you make yourself but Hmm. Miss Parker then asks what like asks Bill what he's got and Bill says they think can't get a good look inside. So they don't know how many gunmen are there, how many hostages they have, or what they want. The Parker's like, How about your tactical insertion team? Bill's like, we don't have a SWAT team per se, but old Virgil up there is a hell of a crack shot. <laughs> And it just the camera pans up, and we just see this old man. He's stuck down in like lighter camo, wearing like a hot orange hunter's vest. 
like what this like red cat like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> like quiet hunting rabbit or however <laughs> full Elmer what? Fudd. Full hunting rabbit. He says hunting rabbit. 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 <laughs> and he just waves and he's like the most stereotypical white male deer hunter. <laughs> Oh, it's funny as Birkenhurst and just look at each other like, hey, for real? <laughs> like, no wonder Nate said he didn't want to leave this to the local Leos. They're not the brightest bulb in the chandelier. <laughs> So then back inside the bank, Nancy's, like Parker Harris and outside was like, great. Better make sure under the money, under the table, money stays under the table. He just clucks his tongue, showing the agreement. And Roy points out if the feds find out, they're screwed. So then Michael tells Derek they're still short and they got to get into the vault. So Derek asks where the manager is. And Sophie says she's the manager. Which is just interesting because all Nate said was. <clears throat> and you know why Sophie said she was the manager. Even though Nate said like we have to take control of the situation. Like, we got to be the police. Sophie knew what Nate meant was we got to separate these guys, get them away from the hostages, and figure out, like, get more information. And <laughs> Megan, like, looks confused, and Frank's like, Bitch, get on Frank, though, for, like, self-saving in this scenario because as far as he knows this is a bank robbery and Frank's like if she wants to hang herself let her I mean that is a smart thing to do is just save yourself kind of let what happens happens yeah Sophie then like says like I might be able to overturn override the vault's timer if you if like if you want me to do that, I can try. So then Derek motions for her to go over to the vault. And they also see like a moment of recognition on Nate's face as like, okay. Sophie's going after my after Derek, which means I need to get Michael separated so we can talk to him god i can feel myself like getting loud and i'm trying not to <laughs> so nate asks quietly and cover like what the hell these guys are up to and it's like you got me all my years on the bench i've never seen bank robbers try to add to their hall after the place is surrounded usually their minds are on, are on getting the hell out of dodge and it's then like what, what would help uh you listen what would help is if we had some kind of background on these people or something. So we like we can know how to sort of deal with them right here, right now. Carson's like already he's outside. He's on his laptop, which is I guess on like the back of his squad car. Yeah, it's like propped up on the on the back hood of the yeah, squad car. The trunk. On the trunk of the squad car. Yeah. Yeah, it's like already working on it. I'm hacked and he's hacked into the bank security system and he got a good look at the gunman and so he's running him through his facial recognition database. And if they have records, they'll get something quick. And then almost immediately Harrison gets a hit on the older guy. Harrison's like, ah, that was fast. You must have warrants. But Harrison discovers that Derek is US military and was an officer in the Navy for 20 years and we retired last spring. 
course, this just adds more puzzle pieces. Yeah, it's like more of like the what the hell. I guess it's like, well, that's, that's it makes sense. Like, why would someone like that rob a bank? And it exactly. like, gets even weirder because Hart's Nexus is his financials. And Derek cleared out all of his accounts earlier in the morning and went to a bunch of ATMs around town, hidden the daily withdrawal limit on his credit cards. So that's like another thing. Like, like why would he take all his money out of the bank and then come back to rob it? But Roy catches Nate like talking to him, not talking and it's like oh no, I was just thinking if the cops were smart about this, they would ID these guys. And then like turns his shoulder and turns to his shoulder and it's like and figure out who they are and get to their family members. So basically this is like the kids are sort of let loose in a way. Because, like, mom and dad are in trouble, so it's, like, the kids. The kids have to come in and run the con yeah. on their own because their parents can't do it. So, Elliot's driving the truck, and he's, like, two steps ahead of you, Harson just sent me the address. I'm on the way now. Then inside the bank, the power cuts out. So, all, like, the fans turn off. It was like, oh, what the hell? <laughs> and he's just groaning. It was like, you know how hot it's going to get in here? Which, that would be stupid to cut. The, I mean, I guess, like, the idea is, like, kind of power to yeah, the well, bank. Yeah, but that yeah, like, well, the, cuts yeah, off the phones. Reason, yeah, the reason it's why like they cut the power is yeah. phones. And it resets the the vault timer because it's automatic. It's on a computer system. That would actually so they, make sense. Yes, so they could actually, because remember, when she hit the button, it automatically locked that door. The when sound the, alarm, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the panic button. Um, yeah. yeah. That's what it's also nicknamed. It shuts that vault, locks it, because yeah. it's on an electrical yeah. system. Of shutting the power reset that system yeah so they can easily then, open like, it. with like the fans turning off like it's i gonna feel turn like that, that place would, into an oven it's gonna turn that place into an oven and then you know when people get hot they get agitated and when they get agitated and they're more likely to do something stupid like, like what that's just how it do. works yeah, was not wrong. entirely wrong, but like that's why <laughs> you'll often see. If that's your see why, like often, like summertime is usually like the highest. It's when like the crime rate, like the highest, like violent crime rate, because it gets hot, and when people get hot, they get agitated, and when people get agitated, they're more likely to do something stupid. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can see why where it would be like, like, you know how hard it's going to get here? Then Nate gets on comms asking what's going on. Harrison walks up to and it's like, well, what's going on? It looks like we cut power to the bank, standard operating procedure. Harris is like, standard, it's, it's standard, it's standard. Where did you get that bull hockey from, son? <laughs> uh, Bill says it was Stephanie Arnold who took a seminar in crisis management. And he's like, oh, proud. And Arnold's like, it was an online seminar. And we got certificates. <laughs> and the artist is like, is there? He has to look like he's serious. And it says certificates. Like you get like certificates come with magic. It says we get okay for kids to saw their parents in half. 
it's like we're just going by the book. Then Hardison acts like he like that triggered him and starts saying that like the book got a good man killed and Parker like puts her hand on his shoulder and then Hardison leaves to cool off as Parker tells Bill he shouldn't mention the book again or propellers. <laughs> Which is like the propellers. Little overboard there. Little overboard. <laughs> yep. But you make us Parker still doesn't understand humans yet. So, but. I mean, she kind of does, but like a little bit, but not she's fully. She's still working on right grifting. Now. She needs some more work on grifting. Yep. But she does get there, I must say. I know. She's so, trying. She's trying. That's all that matters. That's all that yes, matters. Yes, it does. So then Parker continues covering Harrison. So back at the bank, Sophie's got Derek by the vault door and is taping on the keypad. And Sophie's like, Sophie asks Derek, like, why are you doing this? Derek says they don't have a choice and they need the money. Sophie asks, like, for what? Your son is in some sort of trouble? And he is your son, right? And Derek's like, that's none of your damn business. He, got, so he went like, from being nice to being rude in the matter of seconds. Yeah, yeah. So it was like, well, seeing as you have a gun pointing at me, it kind of is my business. Which I mean, fair. Yeah. Derek's like, it's like, you don't know the combination, do you? Me? Are you even the branch manager? He gets all sorts of offended and it's like, dude, what's got your panties in a twist so tight that well, we're you're about being to find hurt. out. We're about to find out. Yep. So it's like, um, not exactly. Then she takes her glasses off and drops her cover accent. And I was like, all right, listen up. Listen up. This is how it is. I just want to help you. You and your son. So just all right, listen up, Derek. Like, I just want to help you, you and your son. And Derek's like, how do you know my name? So it's like, I know a lot of things. I know you don't want to hurt anyone. And you wouldn't be doing this if you didn't have to. So just help me to understand. What's the money for? And then Michael's looking at the window and he's anxious and twitchy. And his phone rings and he answers it. And Nate's listening in. And Michael tells whoever's on the other side of the line, like, I'm working on it. It'll be there. All of it. Don't hurt her. So they hang up the phone, he hangs up, and Michael puts his phone away. So that's another added piece to the puzzle. They're look, yeah, you can see the gears turning in Nate's head. Turning like, in Nate's head. Her? Mm -hmm. Who's this her? <laughs> yeah, who's this her? But we do find out who that her is. Mm -hmm. So then Elliot walks inside that, like he opens the door to go inside the house. And you can see when he opens it, he's like, oh, door's unlocked. And he looks at the the lock, the strike plate. He looks at yeah, the Yeah, it was plate. like, it and was like, it was busted. Bent. It was busted. Yeah. Which means the lock, door was kicked Somebody in. kicked in it. Yeah. And, and, it, the, but, and also the place, also the place is trashed. So Elliot tells me that the house is broken into. And then Elliot picks up a picture of Derek and his navy whites outfit and a woman we find out to be his wife. And Elliot reveals someone was here when it happened. And then Elliot picks up the report card. And that's how we find out the name of the boy is Michael. And they made a joke in the audio commentary about Elliot calling Elliot Cowboy Batman. <laughs> <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness.
that's it. That's hilarious. It's a continuum. I mean, no. it's fitting. It's it is fitting, fitting for him. Fitting. It is. All right, so continuing on. And he takes all that intel, stands up and starts barking to Michael. Michael's freaking out, asking Nate what he's doing. But he's not even holding the gun properly. Hold on, I got, I got my prop. Prop. Because he has it out, like, back up some. Has it here, but he has it, like, pointed down. Like, it's not even, like, pointing it at, at Nate. Here, I don't have the right gun to hold it like this, because I guess I'm just supposed to hold it with one hand. But in reality, you should have it like this. Instead, Michael's got it like, like this, which is like not how you probably you could tell. Hold. You could tell that the confidence isn't there. Instead of having it where you're gripping it like this and you're pointing it straight, mm -hmm. you're pointing it down. Yeah. And kind of gripping it like this instead of. It's not gripping that. it properly. Yeah. You're supposed to have Itch. it gripped like that. That shows like he doesn't know how to handle it. He's inexperienced. That. Yes. yes. He's inexperienced for one and two. He doesn't have the confidence. Yeah. He's terrified. Which is. I mean, I don't like guns, but I always say get a gun. Take a training course. Get, like, go to a range. Have someone educate you on proper maintenance yeah. and proper yeah, like, technique. Uh, they've got handgun fundamental classes for, like, 25 bucks. Yeah. In some places. Places yeah. that I went to take a fundamental yeah, yeah. class, it was $25 per person. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth it. Personally, I think you should be required to take a course if you're gonna buy a handgun. Like when you get part yeah. of like get the, their concealed carry permit, is you have to complete a safety course. Yeah, and to like to learn get how to a, take care yeah. of the gun yeah. and how yeah, to use to, it. To even qualify to take a concealed carry. Uh, course, you have to take a fundamentals class first. Yeah, it's by well, at least yeah. here it's by state law. You have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then maybe what eventually happens, had Michael actually properly learned how to use the gun, it might not have happened in that way. What happens later? So, continuing on. So Nate then tells Michael it's not too late, and Michael then like tenses up because he's like, "This guy knows my name." And Nate says it's not too. He could still save her, and goes by the window and asks if he knows he took her. Michael says it's all his fault. Then starts, he's like trembling at this point and stammering and like stumbling over his words. He's like, they think I did it. And they left a note saying they wanted a hundred grand by five o'clock or they'd kill her. It's like, well, we're not going to let that happen. Okay. But you have to trust me and you have to do exactly what I say. And I promise you, we will get your mom back. It's like, you can see the gears turning in his head, too. At this point, he's like, I don't want to trust him or not. I don't know what to do. Then it cuts to black, and then it comes back, like a commercial break. That comes back, and Michael doesn't have the gun on Nate. And Michael explains to Nate that um, they had him doing little things at first, errands, things like that. And then a few months ago, he started running for them, and it's like, and Nate guesses it's drugs. Mm -hmm. And Michael says mostly meth, and he just he just got caught up. And then Nate's like, 
why are they coming after you now? And Mike reveals that the week before they got ripped off, an entire shipment was gone, and they think he did it. So, but assures Nate he had nothing to do with it. And then Nate keeps reading the situation, like, okay, so they broke into you, broke into your house. They didn't find the drugs, so they took your mom as collateral. And then Michael says they told him he can either return the shipment or he can pay a hundred grand and him and his dad don't have that kind of money and it's his fault. Which this is an odd place to put this, but they mentioned it in the audio commentary. Apparently they had to edit out an ant that was on Nate's collar. <laughs> really? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't tell it's been edited, but apparently there was a collar or an ant on Nate's collar, and it was so distracting that they had to edit it out. That's funny. Yeah, so then the hostages start whispering, and Michael's like, that Michael like snaps, like, shut the hell up. Like he's sledging forward with the gun, but Nate just kind of like grabs his shoulder and pulls him back the window and it's like listen to me i know what you're going through and i can help if you let me it was like how you're trapped in the bank same as us nate then it's like we have i have i have people on the outside then we cut to sophie and derek and derek's like no no cops if they find out we contacted the cops they'd kill her so it was like they're not cops friends of mine and you can trust them Derek's like why should I trust you I don't know who you are <laughs> so he's like I'm a thief <laughs> and she he's smiled like, too when she said that he's like she's oh proud. you sweet summer child you know to come up I'm a thief Derek's like okay I'm like, uh, not sure what to do with that. You can see the look of confusion on his face. It's really clear. Like, okay. He's like, what the heck? do with that? And then Sophie's like, like that creep over there, Judge Foy. Amongst other things, he's been taking bribes from meth dealers and smugglers. And two months ago, he cut a man loose who killed a local girl. Derek's like, Beth Delgado, right? Belt Delgado. Beth Delgado. I remember that. She's a good kid. She went to school with my son. Small town things. Sophie explains that they were running a scam on the judge and they were stealing his dirty money to give it to the family. And then Sophie realized she has one partner inside the bank and she has three more outside. Sorry, it's kind of true. Out. Yeah, it is true. And then Derek's shaking his head and he's like, I can't trust. You're thieves. So he points out there's only a chance as the police have the place surrounded. So he's not going anywhere. And her people are the only ones who can make the drop. And Derek yeah. then asks like, how you can do that. Like the deadline's half an hour and like your friends just happen to have a hundred thousand dollars lying around. <laughs> so if we get a slight smile on her face and you can see them. we're thieves, darling, of course we do. That's funny. But Nate's gonna make it more complicated. He says they were calm, so they're gonna use the money that they have in the bank. And it was like like that's not enough. We're so short, thirty grand. And it, Nate's like, no. At that money we have an alternate revenue source there's a call back back to the pilot when nate tells pearson this job has an alternate revenue stream all right it's a call back to the pilot so Harrison and Parker are waiting outside by the squad car. Parker's fidgeting with handcuffs. 
Harris is like, is he suggesting what I think he's suggesting? Parker's like, are you suggesting what we think you're suggesting? You want to give our bad guys money to some other bad guys. And he's like, that's exactly what I'm suggesting, but we're going to do it without blowing our covers, gang. Douglas is like, who are you talking to? Ellie then looks through the stuff and looks through like stuff in the house. And he's like, maybe I'm just dense. But your alternate revenue source is sitting two feet from Boss Hog himself in the middle of a bank surrounded by a bunch of cops. And that was which a douche the, reference. It was the first, it was the first Duke's Pastor reference, which is it's fitting given that in the studio job episode, which I mentioned earlier, the bad guy is played by not John Snyder, aka Bo AKA Duke. Oh Duke. <laughs> My favorite Duke boy. <laughs> yeah. But then I started. But then also there's that supernatural episode with Christian Kane guest starting where they sing <laughs> the Dukes of Hazard theme song. Yeah. Good old boys with Jeff Nichols. Which there's also a house rules reference. And they play there's a house the rules house reference. They, that's the song that's playing that Lee is singing. Yeah, he sings, Christian Kane's yeah. character so Lee is singing when Dean goes into the bar. And then there's that whole like road house rules thing. Yep. That and, and also when they, like hear the woman's like get like I can't wait for, like when they hear the woman like yelling out and the guy's not leaving her alone. He's and like, like road house rules. He's like road house rules. House like, rules. Road. Yeah, he pauses. <laughs> but then also, down, like hey buddy, I think you've had enough. And the guy's yeah, like, and then um. Also, I I Lorna. Was I was saying, I yeah, Lorna was took epi- like a <laughs> oh, just back to his ass. Anyway, and but she gets on the cell phone, phone. <laughs> which is funny because he like she goes up to him and is like, "Yeah, I did over, sweetie." And he's like, "My gun." <laughs> like this is Texas, She's sweetheart. Like, you can keep your gun. Cell phone. <laughs> She totally smirked at him, and I'm like, "Oh yeah." The look on his face was like, and then like gosh. she walked past and smacked him. Yes, he's like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> all right." And that right there is rule. That's rule seven. Girls can it's, grab whatever they want. That's well, that's that's the second part, part of rule seven. It's yeah, kind of rule it's funny, but but anyways, yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> And then the just goes like grab it, the grab of the woman breaks rule number one, which is only come to have fun. And rule number seven, don't just touch the woman, but you can grab whatever they want to. Which made me think of the, a TikTok I saw recently where someone had edited like that scene of like Dean and Lee confronting the dude the douchey guy. And then I'm throwing him out of the bar to the song. Um this is mine and bad. <laughs> it's I expect to run the world and yells again. Walk in. Never, I think I sent it to you. I think I might have sent it to you. I don't think you did. I but did if I not find it again, send it to me. I, no, I haven't favorited it on my phone. I'll have to send it to you. <laughs> but I literally commented on that video. Well, as Chris, as Chris Kane says, rule number seven says don't touch the women, but they can grab whatever they want to. <laughs> God, I hated how that it was so good seeing the fight, but at what cost? <laughs> I know. Right, continuing on, continuing on. So Nate points out he didn't say it was kind of easy, but nothing's impossible, especially when you have the world's greatest thief on your payroll. And then Nate asks, and then it's like, Parker, you ever robbed a vault that's being robbed? Which that is, as we talked about in the last episode, where we talked about Almost Paradise, that is referenced when Alex Alex Montrose, like, you ever rigged a rigged election? Remember? 
Sir, yeah. I'm trying to keep my voice down, and it's not working very well. <laughs> Oops. Parker says there's the first time for everything, and then she starts reading the bank, saying it was built in 1980 before computers, which means it has a larger than normal and they deposit shoe. And he's like, yeah, because business owners had to drop off ledgers for the daily hauls. And Parker looks at him, and Harrison's like, well, you thought my genius is only limited to ones and zeros? And Parker says she shoots her way in, but it's an alley on the side of the building. So, this shoot thing about the shoot okay. being bigger is not true. <laughs> okay, this was funny because when I, she said that, I immediately thought from the one where Elliot has to go in the ring. It's like, I can't hack a hick. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that about job. That about job. Yep. Mm hmm. But anyways, this whole idea that like this shoot would be bigger to like drop off halt drop off ledgers with daily holes isn't real and it's just something they made up as a way to get Parker inside of the bank. And there's this saying and there's this saying when it comes to like the raised Rupert ledger. Or if something's a ledger, if it's a ledger situation which is a fake fact that sounds real or an orange box, which is a real fake fact that sounds fake, which is with the mile high job. Or this is more for the mile high job, which is two episodes, a couple episodes from now. When Harza says how the black boxes aren't actually black, they're orange to make them easier to find in the rubble. But that's a real fact. Black boxes are painted orange. Sure. Yeah. To make or them some other fine. bright color, depending on uh, what airline. Uh, yeah. But in this case, it was orange. It's kind of like the uh, the cyclist wearing like the bright yellow. Um, yeah. At night. Or so even hunters it, 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 wearing it, it, green. Or not green, or orange. orange. Yeah. Wearing orange. Like being that bright, any bright color, so it can reflect light, mm -hmm. so you can see clearly. Yeah. But is this the idea of like, okay, if something's fake, it sounds real, it's a ledger. If something's real, it sounds fake, that's a black box. So. But anyways, he says that Parker would be visible to the cops out front. Harrison says he can take care of that, but they have a bigger problem. And I was like, what's that? And Harrison says that Sheriff Coltrane called the real FBI in the closest offices in San Diego, so they'll be there in 45 minutes, which is the second Duke of Hazard reference. The Sheriff Coltrane. <laughs> so that's the second Duke of Hazard reference. Roscoe! <laughs> I did not catch that. And I'm, I'm a fan of Dukes of Hazard. Oh my gosh, I'm so sad um, now. I have to sad now. I'm, I'm gonna cry. I think there was also like a boss hog <laughs> one some point yeah but he says they can't worry about that now or they can't worry about the FBI now Harrison asks like when do they worry about it and he says in 45 minutes <laughs> yeah, nurse because, just standing because, there like really? yeah because uh boss hog says something similar to Roscoe is like when do we worry about the dukes He's like man later it's not that big of a deal right now no, Which I guess that was improved. <laughs> it better have been. That that's funny. Uh, so but Nate shows Michael the earbud as Harson's bitching Rambling. about having forty five minutes to do this. Which that was <laughs> that 
taken his calm out and, sh- and given it to Michael to like have him listen was improved by Tim at one take. Oh, that's cool. So then Derek comes back to the ground, kind of pushes Sophie to the ground, you know, and there's no more talking, no more convincing they can help. And Michael also pulls his gun on Nate, but then Nate turns around, like, and Michael, like, like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then Derek's, as Derek's saying, like, they talk, the hostages listen, that's how it works. And Derek then orders Nate away from Michael. So then Derek orders everyone against the desks. Nate goes, but as like Nate's walking back to the desk, Nate, like, there's a subtle nod between Nate and Derek. And Nate also nods to where the briefcase is. And Derek nods back. And that's the signal for the audience that, like, okay. Like, Derek knows what's up. And now Derek knows that Nate's the partner inside the bank. So Derek spots the briefcase and uses his body to hide it as Michael orders everyone to sit down and shut up. The hostages and Nate and Sophie sit by the desk and Derek kicks the briefcase under the table and it slides back out of sight. Sorry, I'm making sure I don't get any text messages. <laughs> if you call me. So outside, Parker and Hardison are waiting. Then you can see Parker set off Hardison's phone and they leave. Hardison answers it and then asks if it's a rental call, but it's the way too short. And then Harrison lists like the most random things. <laughs> like twelve pe- lar- like twelve large pieces, a cheese, a Hawaiian with extra pineapple, two pepperoni, black olives, two meat lovers, and then scolds them for like not writing this stuff down. And then continues with like a half cap vanilla latte tall. Which like it's obviously like a Starbucks reference. Because <laughs> Starbucks is like, re- you get like really specific with their coffee, which like I've had more like yep. Starbucks in the freaking last couple of weeks than I've had in like the last seven years. But Dean also said like how they kind of screwed himself this ransom with Harrison Jansen call because it was all improv and it was good. And like they had a big future star on his hands. We're talking about Aldis, which is cool because now like Aldis has his own like production company and he's starring in a movie with like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yep. Called Black Adam. And also like. He owns his own, like, watch company, his own production company. I think he's producing a movie with his brother, Edwin. Yeah, he He is. It's just in in The the Invisible Man. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's there's another one that's on. He's an Oscar winning movie. City on the Hill. Um, Yeah. Night in Miami. It looks so good. I want to watch it. Oh, Black Adam. I will watch Black Adam just for Aldous Hodge. And I want another trailer where he's the focus. <laughs> of course you do. But I was like, I remember when I was, or the one day when I was looking at Instagram, everyone or they were like the rest of the redemption cast is posting like how they were like doing redemption but all this is posting how he was flying to like shoot something for his production company and i was like i was sad because i didn't 
that meant Hardison wasn't going to be in Redemption Season 2 as much as, like, I would like him to be, which is every episode. <laughs> but, I mean, it makes it that much more special, the episodes we do get to see him in. But part of me was hoping, is hoping that, like, he rushed down to the set and they, like, filmed all of his scenes real quick in, like, in a few days or whatever. I just told all of us not to post any behind-the-scenes stuff about it. <laughs> so they don't, like, spoil. See, I continue it on, so... Parker is... It will unscrew the shoot doors. Her snaps like three copies of hollow notes. Did a list of the man. Sticks, real, because they're tailgating. And a pair of overalls, kibble and bits, and etch a sketch, stuffed bears. Parker finally makes it to the shoot, and then Harrison gets everyone moving. Which I couldn't help but think when Parker was going to the shoot. It's Parker's the one line in Redemption where she says, like, when they're talking about, like, what's all been happening and, like, the gap. And Parker's like, says about how she's like running all the crews and it's been a while since she's and elliot has his food trucks and parker says how like it's been a lot like her and elliot do all the traveling and it's been a long time since she's been an event <laughs> <laughs> and harrison's like babe like we built vents into house you put vents into the house Parker's like but I know those vents and there's nothing like sliding into a hot strange bed <laughs> and then Elliot's face is like something's <laughs> wrong with you woman <laughs> but I, I don't know if that was a reference to like <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna freaking say it because there's nobody else around it. Sex stuff between Parker and ours. It might be. <laughs> I mean, you have to admit, they might be the peop type of people that are into some kinky crap. Ours is a trout of the internet. That is all I'm saying. True. And also, there's a moment where she kind of, like, shoves her sin against the wall, and, uh, he liked it. He didn't fight <clears> it. <throat> mm -mm. And he's just, like, he kind of tenses up a little bit, but looks at her, like, oh, he really? just gets slammed against him, and he's like, babe. <laughs> and he just, like, he does this. Okay. He literally rolls his eyes, he's like, come on. Like you're really I want to know this in front of my sister. <laughs> yeah, I want to know how many times did they have to film that scene because Alice broke. Or is, or Beth made it dirty. <laughs> True, or both. I, yeah, Aldis would make it dirty, <laughs> and he would just like break break character and start laughing because he did that in season five. He did in the one yep. in the season five blooper reel when they're it's like the one of the Double last secret. shots of the episode. <laughs> no. Well Yes, but that's not the blooper I was referring to. It's when they're that's coming the one that popped it's like my the head. When they come out of the coffee shop. And it's season five. And I was just like, oh babe, can the shots open you down? Parker's in, and, in the and Beth, blooper. And Bessie like, goes. I'm down for some chocolate. <laughs> I could go for some chocolate. And, and then she, she walks away. Harrison, her eldest just like, looks at her like, hey. And he follows after her and it goes, it looks like the camera pants the Christian. He's smiling. He's legit smiling. It and makes I'm like, sense now that he's smiling. He knows. He knows what's going on. He's like, he's, he's hearing. I can't believe that they did this. He's probably hearing or reacting to the take where Pars or Aldous and Beth are being dirty. 
<laughs> That's probably like, and then they just yeah. cut it. And then the one that I'm talking about was when they're talking to Sophie via, Sophie via the video chat. And Aldis mentions a certain move that they do. And he had a Freudian slip where he said something wrong and it broke Christian. What, 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 what is it? Is that the double secret penetration? Yep. That was a Freudian <laughs> slip. <laughs> and he's like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it broke Christian. Because <laughs> he's like dying laughing, clapping. That's yeah, on the like, floor. I think like Beth collapsed on the floor. No, she just like she goes to the fun here's Gina Watson very visibly pregnant. <laughs> and like starts strutting her stomach out <laughs> and Christian just clapping. <laughs> and like Beth belly laugh. Yeah, yeah. I think Beth might have collapsed Bessie. to the floor. No, she like bit over laughing, turning away <laughs> in the camera. Oh, now I'm thinking of the fake hookups. <laughs> the one where it's the uh, one where Elliot has to go undercover as a baseball player. <laughs> you know, when they're on the... Yeah, where the PA has to go hunting for them. <laughs> <laughs> and then finds, like, Carson, or Elvis and Beth, like, getting flirty, and he's got, like, the tie loose. <laughs> And then, and then uh, all Christians and like another side, like, I told you, man. It's like, I told you they, like, they were oh, back there. Me. Like, I told you they were back there. And then Peter's like, why don't you tell me? He's like, hey, look, man. And then just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and then it cuts like, just like, it's like four minutes later, PA's fighting him again. And then it's freaking Christian. <laughs> it's Christian and all this coming out. Christian's, I think, like, zipping his pants up. No, he's tucking his shirt in. I thought he was zipping his pants. His... <laughs> well, I mean, he might have done both. Yeah, he's pulling up his pants and then tucking his shirt in and walking off. And then Otis is, like, buttoned back up his shirt. He's like, yeah, he's, like, adjusting oh, his shirt. Like, oh, geez, and then they run off. And if he is, and like, yep, we got Christian and Otis coming to set. And you think and that's the end of it, but then just freaking Beth runs out all the show. Yeah, and she's like adjusting her button up, and for some reason, Wait, that PA had be, guy. That had to be where the whole OT3 thing came from. Yeah, that and then the, the, the poor guy, the poor PA, like, starts Start coughing and like fake, fake throwing up. Button. Yeah, and he, she runs past him, and he, I think he realized what was going on. Going you know, on. <laughs> you know, I know Dean Devlin. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Says that he makes family red. entertainment. Family entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Devlin. Sir. I call bullshit. Shame on you, Dean Devlin. We know what you're doing. Like, Stop it. Behave I, yourself. I, I, okay, continue on before my brain. <clears throat> so, going back in the bank. Going back at the Damn bank. Now I have double secret there. penetration stuck in my head. <laughs> back in the bank, Michael walks past Derek saying they need to show some different. <clears throat> They're criminals. <clears throat> Sees the cops outside and it's like, well, then again. <laughs> then Michael picks up the briefcase, or Derek, I'm sorry, picks up the briefcase and leaves. And their boy then asks Derek, or asks me, like, what he said to him. He tells her Troy is still in cover. They just trying to divide and conquer a little bit, play the cake, get them to turn on one another. And it was starting to work. I don't know if that was like a reference to Nate saying, like, 
best way to get two people to tell a secret is by um, getting them to on each other. Sorry, I'm trying to find the So I can view chat. There we go. Okay. So and everything goes to the shoe where Parker, she's just laying there. Like arm on her hand, her head on her hand, chilling. <laughs> Derek hands her the briefcase and it's like there's a lot of money in there. Parker's like, I know. Derek's like, then it's like, my wife's life depends on that money getting where it needs to go. I was like, I understand. And says, sometimes bad guys are the only good guys you get. Derek then, so sharply, like, his mouth's a bit open. It's probably like, I'm really trusting these to save my wife's life right now. Which is interesting, the idea of Parker saying, like, Sometimes bad guys are the only good guys you get because that's kind of the theme of the whole series and the tagline. Like it was, this is a last minute edition, I guess, that became the tagline of the show. And even like the team being good guys, bad guys, good bad guys is like the theme of this whole series. And it only comes up in like the intros later, but carries into redemption with Sophie telling Brianna in the Tower Drop episode when Brianna's like, we're going to seriously mess this dude up. Like, are we the bad guys here? So I was like, oh, yeah. And so I was like, like, we aren't heroes. Like, we're just... Like, we're not the, like, we're the, like, like, don't forget that, Brianna. Like, we're the good guy. Like, we're the bad guys. Like, we aren't heroes. We're just necessary. Bitch. Yeah. I'm going to say it's really good writing of a morally gray character. Yeah, it's like, we're criminals. But yeah, like, we're criminals. We want we're just we want to burn the system and not other people. Yeah. So back in the lobby of the bank where Chess talked to Michael saying you obviously got himself in trouble and offer stuff. Sorry, I'm trying to get through this because I still got a bit more notes to go and we're running low on time. So where Chess talked to Michael saying you obviously got himself in some trouble and offers to help. And they just, that basically tells Roy to shut the fuck up. <laughs> and that was just the, that was the polite Southern way of basically saying, shut the fuck up. Was it not? Yeah, it was like, can you please shut your mouth, basically. But it was a backhanded way. Shot. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Pretty much. It was a backhanded way of saying it, too. Mm. And then Roy stands up and offers to give Michael a loan. But then Roy goes to, like, find his briefcase to, like, show that, like, his work's good. And, he, like, he's got the money. But um, money's gone. <laughs> and this would be the second shit hits the fan moment. Because immediately, Roy starts getting pissed. Like, where's my briefcase? But then this is where it. This is where it gets even worse. Because Michael cell phone rings, so Nate stands up. Which I guess like the standing up was like, they had forgotten to like shot that scene specifically. So they just kind of like, or they, they had him standing, 
but they didn't actually get him standing up. So they just kind of like cut past like a cut take. Where it was like Tim was standing up like once they called cut. So they had to like extend it a bit. So to show him like standing up. So Michael gets his phone out and says it's them. And then like, like he kind of like turns to Nate. And then it's like, what do I do? And Nate, he just kind of frees a bit, but then because Michael is distracted and not paying attention, Roy is able to kind of like pin Michael's arm back against him, gain control of the gun. And he like turns, gun goes off shoot Nate in the shoulder. He goes down or even like stumbles back, but then Sophie yells like, Nate! Yep. And then she goes up to him and like, Nate! And as I already said, this is the second moment where shit hits the fan. Because now it's like... They know their real names. Well, that... Like, Nate got shot. Roy now has... Has figured out something's wrong. And Nate's been shot. And now the con's blown. And so are their covers. Yep. And they have no way to get to Parker Hardison and Elliot. And in a few minutes here, they're about to lose communications. So it is like the trifecta of shit hits the fan. Yeah, it's like the oh crap trifecta. It is the trifecta. And then, so Roy's got Michael in a lock gun on, like the gun's on him. And then Derek comes back in, cocking the shotgun, ordering Roy to drop his gun. Never tells Derek to drop his first. Sophie meanwhile is like holding it and is like laying his head on her lap. Mm, I see other hostages cute. are like making sure he's okay. And Sophie's like telling Nate to talk to her. And outside, the cops start like hiding behind the cop car, guns drawn at the bank. Virgil's has getting his rifle cocked. And Harrison walks there was like, well, like, wait a minute. And Bill's like, like there could be people hurt in there. He goes, you don't know that. It was just one shot. Like, we go in, guns blazing. There will be more shots and more people will get hurt. Like, we need to know what happened. Which I think, like, the we need to know what happened was also signaling Sophie and Nate. Or it was Harrison signaling Sophie and Nate, like, someone better tell me what the fuck's going on inside that bank. <laughs> Tell me what the hell happened now. Yeah. But then so he's telling everyone, like, let's calm down, put the guns away, and we could talk this through. But it's like, I'm not taking orders from you, Missy. So it's like, what is your problem? It was like, you're my problem. I heard you and Nate there. Now I heard what you called him, which is weird because what you meant, yeah. His name said his name was Carl. And then Roy like looks between like Nate and Sophie and Michael and Derek and is like, You're trying to rip me off. <laughs> Freaking Nate. He's laying there in Sophie's lap and all he could do is just groan and lift up his arm, like, uh. 
And that was him like saying, like, eh, it's just screw you. <laughs> and also, it's like, well, damn it, the con's blown. Like, being shot, it's like just an inconvenience compared to the con being blown. That shows where his priorities lie. Yeah. But Roy thinks that Derek and Michael are in on it with Nate and Sophie. Derek explains that they have nothing to do with Nate and Sophie, and Roy connects the, it's like, connects the wrong dots. As funny as this scene, it's the equivalent of that one, I think it's from like BuzzFeed Unsolved, where the one person's like, I've connected the dots. And someone's like, didn't connect shit. And the other person's like, but I connected them. It's kind of what's going on here. Yeah. Because Roy thinks that the four of them are conspiring against him. And the bank robbery isn't even real. And it's all just a scam to get his money. And he's getting more and more angry and delusional. And like, it's like not a bad plan. And if like Nate had just disappeared with the cash, they knew that he'd come after him. And eventually Roy would check him down. If the money was stolen in the bank robbery, they'd get away with it. But he's also like started a Twitch shoot too. Like Roy's starting to Twitch. Which ends up working in their favor. His descent into madness is kind of like the Mad Hatter a bit, like creating all the hats, making him more mad a bit. I think that's how the story goes. With the Mad Hatter. Yeah, pretty much. Just like you can see the the crazy mm-hmm. is it's gonna boil over. He's gone down the rabbit hole <clears throat> and hit in Wonderland. But Derek says that he's wrong and they were just trying to help him reveals his wife was taken and he needs the money for ransom. And was like, Ransom? Really? Is that the best it can do? You'd have to be an idiot to fall for a cockamamie story like that. And he's starting to become, like, more unhinged. Michael says he's telling the tru- truth, and then boy yells for everyone to shut up, and then orders Derek to hand over the gun before he gets it, and he said, shoot all four of them. Derek then looks at me, and then sets the shotgun on the ground and goes over to the desk. Roy like shows Michael to him and Derek covers him. And Sophie says like tells Roy like he needs a hospital like Nate needs a hospital. And Roy's like that's not gonna happen and no one's getting out of here until I get my money. And it's also getting more like twitchy. This is where, like, the twitch becomes more present. This is, like, twitching his lip and his eye. And it's also starting to, like, breathe heavy- heavier. And then Roy asks where his damn briefcase is. Which we find out is sitting in the middle of a dirt road near a drop-off to a ditch. And Elliot's watching it through binoculars and he's, like, looking at his watch, too. Which is just an interesting zoom shot here. Because it's like four zooms. Which that's actually how they shot it. They call it the ninja zoom. So basically, if this is Christian, and back here is the camera, how they shot the scene was they like zoomed, stopped, Zoom, stop, zoom, stop, zoom, stop. So it was like four zooms that they froze or that they cut together to look like just one big zoom. 
Yeah. Christian had a freeze in between each take while they reset the camera. <laughs> and apparently the idea came from, I think it was the camera operator or something, but someone, it was, came from someone who worked on a sniper movie. Very cool. Then Sophie tells Roy that it's not here. And Roy's like, well, that I can see. Or I can see that. And Sophie's like, no, I mean, it's not in the building. Elliot's. So Elliot's like still waiting and he's like starting to get impatient. And you can like tell he's getting impatient. Hearts it's like they haven't arrived yet. And I was like, yeah, because meth heads are so punctual. <laughs> I have that written down. Which I guess And then I I yeah, I put in there the was a John kid. Rogers line, I guess. Yeah, and then like, I put that stuff is John Rogers for some reason. I put in the uh, quotation marks sassy boy because he got sassy. He's like, he did. <laughs> it's like, I can't do nothing until they get here. Yeah, his, his damn accent came out because he was getting frustrated. Did. And it was cute. It was. All right, so then Roy starts pacing, saying, like, you don't come into my town. If they can get away with my money, then Frank tells Roy that the man has been shot and he has to let him go. Or it's like, nobody. I said, nobody leaves. Megan's like, he's bleeding. Or it's like, oh, well, shut up. Just shut up. I'm trying to think. And you've got the briefcase out of the building. You have a, that means you have a man on the outside. How are you communicating with them? So outside, Parker's still in Hastings. Now she took that she base jumped off the building onto the roof of an armored car and took out the guard. It's like you mean the gunman? He was like, yeah, that's what I said. And Harsik comes over saying the gunshot was accidental misfire and no one was hurt, but a hostage was grazed and they're going to release him as soon as their demands are met. Then that's where the held pizzas are at. Like, Hayson takes Arnold and leaves, and Harrison and Parker go over to Harrison's laptop and are watching the security footage. And Parker's like, this is bad. Or then it just over to Nate and, and, like, has the shotgun, like, at Nate's other shoulder. And then, like, Chuckles as he sees the calm. And he holds it up to the camera. Like to the security cameras, like, you get your guys when I get my money. Tosses the calm down, stomps on it, which sends a high pitched whine. Yeah, it's, it's Parker's cop, you can see her like flinching and she like grabs her ear. Yeah, so like, does oh, Elliot. Elliot really kind of flinched too. And oh, then, it kind of flinched too, and he went like that. He's like, ow. Sophie. Uh, Sophie, in the sex moment. Because then, well, then it's like, hand that to Sophie. And she takes her calm out. Hands it over, and it's like, now fuck off. She got kind of mad. Oh, she was pissed. Yep. Which, I mean, like, her man's been shot. Cover's blown. No exit. And now she's just lost communications with the only part of people who could help her get an exit. Yep. Royal then stops on her comp, and you see it's, like, Elliot flinching. To the feedback. And what's funny is he like grabs his hair, like, like he covers his ear, but he just got like a thing of his hair. <laughs> and, and the audio commentary, they're like, can you even hear anything? Like, oh, that's all hair. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> really? Oh my goodness. They love giving him crap, don't they? They do love giving him crap. I mean, it's well earned. True. To be fair. But then Ellie then asked if he if he thought or if that's what he thought it was. I was just like, right, so then Nate looks pretty messed up and they're gonna need that briefcase back. Then see a vehicle pull up as Ellie goes back, looking through his binoculars. Ellie says he's working on it and we see the meth heads get out of the car. So back at the bank, Nate is now sitting up and Sophie's like was crying because her eyes are all red and wet and she's sweating. But it's like she's still shaken up. Nate's like asking if she's mine and Sophie checks like the back of his shoulder and reveals she thinks it went through and through and it missed his artery. And it's like, well, the least there is that. So it's like, things could be worse. It's like worse than me getting shot at a bullet. I was like, no, 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 no. You don't get to lay that girl upon me. Like, you wouldn't even, me wouldn't even be in this. If I just walked out with the cash when he had the chance. And Sophie's, and Sophie's like, I would have been fine. Or do you want to act out like what Nate and Sophie do in this moment? Sophie's like, I would have been fine. And Nate's like, I mean, like, I know. I can't do it. I it's can't like, do it. I could take care of myself. I know. I've been doing this for a long time. It's like, I know. <laughs> and she's like, she's, ever since, her voice is like, she's borderline panicking, like yeah. full blown panic. Like, before, like, since before I knew you, I know. I was like, I'm just saying. It's all right. I got it. It was then like, all right, like ask what the so for then ask like what the plane is. And it's like the plane. You mean the one that involves carbon a half inch hole in my shoulder? That plane. I threw that one out a long time ago. <laughs> it's like and it's like it doesn't matter anyways. So it's like we lost communication. It's like we did. It's like Hardison Parker and Elliot. It's like. Yeah, they're on their own. So now it's officially the part where it's like the kids are on their own. Because now they can't communicate with Nate and Sophie, like what the plan is. So back of the job we see is who I believe is like an underling is counting the cash from the briefcase. And like the boss meth heads like is watching and underling reveals that there's more than they asked for. And boss meth heads like, well, ain't that punk just full of surprises? The third beard's are going to be in like the passenger seat of the car that they're driving. And then we see that the mother who is credited as Ellen so my lips are like really jacked. Ellen is in the back seat of the car. Her hands are bound and she has a gag on, which is just like a bandana. Though, I must admit, this is pretty badass of her because she opens the car door, gets out, though immediately falls, but she tried escaping. Gotta give her credit for that. Yeah, I mean, she at least tried, she tried to fight her way out. She did, but then... But she falls over, but then the moss bit. I was going there, was like, Why the hell do you think you're going, old lady? He, like, slams her door shut, starts dragging her across the dirt a bit, which, as someone who's been dragged across grass, that shit hurts. Yeah, it feels like... Tiny little knives are being cut through your skin. So I it was someone I knew in middle school. It was or no elementary school. Sorry, it was fifth grade. Someone who I used to be friends with. She took something I had said way out of context, and was gonna like start rumors, 
she's going to start a rumor about me. It was what was going on. And then I had fallen when I was trying to run away, but she like had, she was grabbing me and then she, I had fallen to the ground, but instead of like helping me up, she, she started dragging me like on my front. So I had like rashes, like road burn rashes. It was grass, but I still had like rashes on my shoulders and on my stomach. And then like I tried getting up, but she like pulled me back and I landed on my back. So like my shoulder was all like red and burned because I was dragged around my back and I was like screaming for my brother. And like I had after then like luckily end of recess was called. So then I just like, I ran to a teacher and I was like, she just dragged me across the field and nobody saw it. Wow. So then, and then like, she like went up beside me because she saw I was like telling the teacher cause you bet your ass I was telling the teacher. And- Oh, what a cue. She was like, oh, we just played a game. I was like, bullshit, we weren't playing a game. And then, like, they just separated us, but nothing really happened. So then when I got home, I didn't tell my mom. I didn't actually see my mom until later that day when I was at my brother's football practice. So then I'm telling my mom what happened. And then she ran into the little bitch's par grandparents who she was living with at Walmart and talked to my principal and threatened like police action for like assault if they didn't like deal with this. Which, so yeah, that shit hurts. And, but I kind of got revenge by dating her ex-boyfriend. But that only lasted a year because he cheated on me. At least you got your revenge in a way. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh-huh. But, yeah, I've actually been, like, thrown, pushed to the ground by a bully before. So, mm -hmm. I know how much getting shoved to the freaking ground, um... And then when I tried to get up and run, I turned over my own feet and I slid. I was in a, in like, thank of three pants trying to run away from this bully that was just throwing his words wearing, at me. But yeah. I think if it had been I, a t-shirt, though, because it was, like, yeah. agonizing against my shoulders because of the burn. Like, I couldn't yeah, wear I was, freaking t-shirts. I had to wear tank tops. Yeah, I had, I had, like, a... Kind of like a rug burn, which it was, because we were in the gym and I was running away, and I said stop multiple times. Because we were just playing a game of, like, I think kickball or something, and he I've gotten a kickball kick to my face. Yeah, he physically hunted me down and made me fall onto the floor and get a floor burn, where mm -hmm. you're just, your skin's rubbed raw and it's just wet. Mm -hmm. And everything hurts. Oh. I limped over to the teacher and I said he, I told, I told him, I told him to stop seven times and he mm -hmm. said no. And he kept trying to hunt me down. Take him out of the game. I was also Cheating. harassed. I was also harassed like all throughout when I was at my old high school. Sometimes people just suck. Yeah. And this, is, this episode is proof of that. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, like, I was even, like, it got so bad in high school to the point where I, like, I isolated myself, which kind of taking this back to leverage a bit. Leverage was what I would watch in the cafeteria alone when I would sit at lunch. 
like when I would sit in the cafeteria alone at lunch, I was watching Leverage as I was eating my shitty school lunch. But like seeing, watching Leverage was like the happiest I was. Because there's a satisfaction. Uh, there's a level of catharticism to seeing like the bad guys get taken down by people who are good at their jobs. Because no one helped me when I was being harassed. Except my mom. Because my mom demanded to the school principal when I was in fifth grade that I be, that we be separated in classes and punished or she was gonna threaten police action. And when I, and then in ninth grade, when I broke, or no, this wasn't ninth grade, this was 10th grade. When I broke down in her car in the Valley Dairy parking lot because it had gotten so bad. The harassment was getting so bad. It was kind of getting to the point where it would have, where it could have escalated to sexual harassment because like this one kid would be saying like, like acting like we were dating even though we weren't and I stopped, like, I, like, tried telling him to stop, but he wouldn't stop, so then I just played along with it, hoping that, like, playing along, he wouldn't expect me to play along, so that would, like, get him to stop, but it didn't, so then it got to the point where I started, I had to get loud. And that was my defense mechanism was getting loud. Because then everybody could hear me. They could hear me telling them to stop. And nobody likes it when you're loud. Yeah, they almost like back away from you. And it wasn't, but it wasn't until I broke down in the Valadary parking lot because it had gotten so bad that my mom called the guidance counselor for me. And I was taken to the guidance counselor's office and I wrote down everything that had happened. I wrote down the names of the people who enabled it. I wrote down the names of the people who did it and who did it. I described what was happening. I don't think anything happened because I still saw them in class. And that barely even stopped it. So that's when I started getting loud. And I slid in myself. And that's why I never made friends in high school. Because that, that was how I protected myself, was isolating myself. So. Yeah. Fuck bullies. And fuck the school systems that allow bullies to happen. Yeah, I mean, I had someone call. Yeah, I had somebody comment on my eyes. Because I had a lazy eye because my muscles were weak in this in this eye and it made me cry and he just said it kind of rudely and mm -hmm. didn't even stink and apologize for it later mm -hmm. and i called him out on him like hey next time you do that i will do something i don't oh, care I threatened, if I 
I've threatened to kick it to kick one of the guys who was harassing me in the balls. And I but think I nearly I did. Say, yeah, I nearly but did. I will say, literally the next day it happened again. And my friend and the teacher both got after him. Mm. I was sitting across the table from him and he said it again. And I broke down crying in, in class. Didn't even try to hide it. And I reported him. I reported him for bullying. And he got freaking uh, a whole month of lunch detention. Lunch detention? Month. That was it? Yeah. And I reported him. And I said, I, I told the counselor and I told the principal, next time this happens, he deserves more than that. And he actually smartened up after that because he got in trouble again for harassing another student and being mm -hmm. a bully. But I will say, he actually wised up and actually transferred schools mm -hmm. uh, after freshman year of high school. And I never saw him again. Mm -hmm. And then a few years ago, I saw him at Walmart and he apologized mm -hmm. to me for the way that he treated me. And I'm like, you were just, a, I told him, you were just an idiot kid. Mm -hmm. I hope hopefully you learned from it. He's like, yeah, I did. I feel so bad. I'm like, yeah, treat people mm -hmm. how you want to be treated. Remember that. And he's like, yeah, point. you're right. <laughs> but the fact that he apologized right. to, to me makes me yeah. feel better. Yeah, to me that only works up to a certain point because like all the kids who bullied me were, uh, like they were the ones who had money. So like they were like the popular kids and the ones no one wanted to go up against so yeah i threatened to kick one of the boys in the balls and i got a sh I, I did i think i did kick his shin and threatened like next time i'm going for your drunk like Oh, I. Mm. That's why I switched schools. Some people are just mm. jerks. And. Yeah, that's why the only people I talk to really now are you and the people I met online. So, yeah. Fuck you, Emily. And fuck you, Dubois Area. Uh, or fuck you, Watson Elementary. And fuck you, Dubois Area High School. And fuck you, Dubois Area Middle School. And fuck you, Wayden. And the rest of you, you know who you are. Fuck you. Just be a decent human being. Don't be a piece of human trash. Plain and yeah. simple. Mm -hmm. All right, continuing on, because, yeah, continuing on. Sorry, that. <laughs> Don't know what the fuck that was. All right, moving on. So, Boss Smith head after he jacks her cross, pulls out a revolver, asking again, like, hold on, asking, like, where the hell she thinks she's going. And so, like, he has it, and he's going to, like, slap her with it, but Elliot catches his arm, like, right here, pulls it down, gets close, and it's like, hey. Or I think he, like, I know he just, like, was holding it. And I was like, hey. As well as, like, crank and screams like a girl. I think <laughs> the classic leverage theme plays as Elliot grabs the revolver kicks kicks his knee in yeah. which he causes grabs him to scream it, like he a grabs girl. And, and twist his hand and then kicks his, him in the knee let it he twists it away grabs it and twists mm -hmm. it away and it he causes him to let go and then he kicks him in the shin dropping him down the, to because one knee he starts screaming like yeah it's like a high pitch scream he's, he's and screaming. apparently the person who casted for that has had the best high pitch scream so that's why he got casted because he had the best high pitched scream. 
so oh, this is funny like a third goon opens the goes to like open the door to get out elliot kicks like the door shut which i guess like the kick in the door shut was improvised by christian i think of course that's what they said oklahoma. <laughs> yeah fucking oklahoma then elliot like pops out the cylinder starts dumping the bullet sound it's like right answer and then just throws the gun at the coon inside the car he just like tosses it just like, like it, it's kind of hard too and then it smacks him it probably like it hit him got kind him of good like, it got him yeah. good it got him good yeah but but i will say before he does that he kicks the door shut and says stay in the car and he no, gets, that's like, a bit later when he's sit- yeah, I love that part. He just kicks the door shut. Yeah, it's like yeah, I want to know how much fun CK had doing that. Oh, everybody had a lot of fun. Well, it was 110 degrees out when they shot that scene, so. And his hair is down too, so. It is down. Well, this nucky boy, he was fine. He probably uh, went, after they called cut, he probably went and drank a few beers <laughs> instead probably. of water probably. or Gatorade. Yeah. Gatorade went, but actually coconut water would have been better. Yeah. Or it's, even like juice well, basically or something. Coconut, coconut water and Gatorade serve the same purpose of restoring electrolytes, which is what you really need when you sweat. Is those electrolytes? Just Gatorade has more sugar in it. Yep. The coconut water does. But both are good. Yep. But then the underling comes up and Elliot like quickly lands like he lands like a single blow and then like pushes the goon, pushes him back. And then under and underling drops the briefcase to the possible and Elliot this is like come on and stiff elbows him um that. yeah he hit yeah he does a collie move he hits Kali. right here That's against bad. the guy's face and you see the guy's face go one way and then goes punch one way. him yep it's like ow where she kicks the door no shut again yeah, and then he kicks the door shut again has underling's arm but he has like underling's arm in his hand S- like kicks or slams on goon's pos goon's back i think that's what it was is either like his knee again or like his lower back he lets out another high-pitched scream but then elliot uses the fact that he's like twisted underling's arm to then like flip him on his back and then Elliot kicks the world once again, and this is when he yells, Stay in the car! <laughs> I love that. And by this time, Underling has gotten up. So he punched, and then, or no, he not punched up, but he like punches him on the floor, but third guy didn't listen and opens the door. Which is Elliot grabs his shirt, then uses like the frame to like beat the shit out of the guy. Yep. He hits him like and I think just sends times him when I counted and then he just dropped. And then he's all but passed out. He kind of. And then like runs up to Elliot. Yeah. Uh, it, that was Goon 2. Goon 2. He like yeah. kind of like walked around the car a little bit, I think. Yeah. And the trash talking that takes place with Goon 2. And I love Elliot, it. And then Elliot, Underling runs up to Elliot, he lands blow right in the soul it flexes because like he runs up and like Elliot just socks him like right in the gut. Yeah, knocks. And then knocks, he just like pushes him back. Yeah. Sending knocks him tumbling him down, down the ditch. Yeah. Where he hits knocks the chain like over fence. with that hit and then just shoves him and just rolling down the hill. <laughs> into a gate. Into a chain like fence, yeah. I hit one of those. It hurts. I felt bad for him when he hit the fence. So I'm like, yeah. And there oh, was that's, no that's gonna leave a bruise. Padding. 
And there is no padding. Yeah. I was like, ooh, that's gonna leave a bruise. And then Ellie then turns to like look at and at like the boss. He just starts whimpering. He's just like crawling away and like holding He's his like, like uh, thigh. Like, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, mm-mm, I'm, I, I've had enough. But then Ellie, the woman's now like standing up. Ellie goes over, gets down, takes her like puts like takes her gag down, and she's like, "Who are you?" And now it's like, <laughs> "Well, ma'am, we be the cavalry." And the smirk he had on his face. He does have a smirk. But then she says, she's like, <sighs> You can see it in her eyes. She was like, She's swooning. Yeah, I know. She's I mean, come on. Freaking Christian Kane, come on. Who wouldn't? But, I'm just like, I did this whole like, I should always point out like the whole like different kind of night thing again. With, um, because like she looks at him kind of like a white knight and like swooning over like her white knight, yep. the whole different kind of knight thing that Elliot's not the white knight who takes you off, off on his white horse, he is the knight who takes you for a ride and then leaves you at the end of the night because that's a little personification to me of that. Because it's she's like, basic. she swoons, it, it, and then she's probably yeah. like, okay, now take me back to my husband and my son. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's tempting. But yeah, it's, it's tempting. Like, but now I need I to actually, get back to my husband and my son. Yeah, I actually wrote a uh, a fanfic chapter that I was going to post for ConCon fic. Uh, kind of like this, but it was just it was just me and Christian, and he does that kind of thing where he has to save me, and I kind of flirt with him, <laughs> and like we go in to kiss, and I just kiss his cheek and get up and walk off, and I look back behind me, and he's staring at my butt. <laughs> <laughs> but I never wrote it. I never wrote it because I couldn't hey. get it out. I- hey, hey, hey. As Trace Atkins said. You can look, but you can't touch. (laughs) I hate you. You're so evil. And now I'm red faced. I hate you. Oh my gosh, you're gonna kill me one of these days. Oh my goodness. You love me. Remind me why. What charm personality? This is our like daily interaction. It is. Uh, I'll get down. Get down. <laughs> Don't you dare! <laughs> Don't right. you dare! So, <laughs> uh, that'll probably come up later, anyways. So back outside the bed. Back outside the bay, Carson sounds like top going through security footage. Parker asks if he's ready yet. Harson says he needs a few more minutes. Parker says to hurry up as the pizza's here. Which I want to point and I feel bad for this other weird boy. Who is played by Dean Devlin's actual assistant? Cool. And basically the pizza idea came from the fact that they had to backtrack how to get the money inside the bank without the cops noticing. Oh. Which is how the pizza box came in. Oh, that's cool. So, back inside the bank, everyone's sitting up against the desk, and it's guarding corner's shoulder, voice pacing. Sophie, like, begs Roy to, like, let the paramedics take Nate, and the rest of them will stay. And Roy faces back. This fucking douchiest line ever. And give up my leverage. Like, <laughs> bitch. That's Nate's line. How 
dare you! You lied stealer! Shame on you! I gotta throat punch you! And age you! At nature's Derek and Michael that Ellen will be alright and everything will be alright. And then Derek asks Nate, your people, they're good. Then Nate gets a slight spark on his face. He says, like, yeah. The best. <laughs> and it just said it all caps. God, he loves them. Which is actually because before they call it action, or before they shot that, the actor had asked, like, Nate, instead of, like, here, the cure people are good when it was on, like, another footage. Or when it was on Tim's footage. The guy said, how's your son in Paris? Because at the time, Tim, Tim had a six-year-old son named Milo. He was back in Paris. And so that smile was him, like, thinking about his son. In Paris. Oh. Which is apparently is a trick that Dean Devlin often does to like get a reaction out of an actor. And they use this trick in the pilot. And when Nate gets all like hard eyes and like big smiles around Sophie, when he, before he asks like, you in or whatever and I, I forget what was said I think it was something actually like inappropriate <laughs> or something like that that like that it's a trick Dean likes to do to get a certain reaction out of the actor sneaky man but, Dean yeah. that one works because that was like that was kind of like the best moment out of that whole episode out of this whole episode kind of was like Nate's smile when he says yeah the best he smiles alright continue on so Michael says this is all his fault and he never should have gone about to those guys and at this point, it's so hot in there that Michael's dripping sweat in, like, the armpit soaked. His sh like, the collar is all soaked, like, down to, like, his, like, the, his pecs. It's soaked down, too. Like, that's how much fucking sweat's on the shirt. And it is so gross. So gross. It's basically so like someone, yeah, it's like someone took a super soaker and just drenched him, basically, yeah. at this point. Yeah. Like a really gross version of a wet t-shirt contest. That's <laughs> what. And Michael says, but then we start to feel guilty. And then it's like, if something happened to mom. And then he tells Dirk he's sorry. And but all Dirk does is just pull him into a hug. But then there's a knock on the door. And it's hard to say, saying he's Agent Leonard. And he's got the pizzas he ordered. All right. <clears throat> Roy yells out they didn't order any pizza. Then Nate tells Roy, like, he's going to want to answer that. And then, like, rubs mm -hmm. his finger together. Which singles, signals to Roy that, like, that's where your money is. Roy gets the hit and has the guard unlock the door. Guard does. Hardison walks in and a gurney and two paramedics follow him in. And the paramedics obviously go to Nate. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Sen Hardison gets handed a pizza box and tells Roy he was told he was expecting this. 
So Harrison sets a box on the desk and opens it, revealing the cash. But the two EMTs, one's a blonde, and another is a dark haired male. This is relevant. This is relevant. Hardison then asks for if there's anything else that can get him to end this peacefully. Peacefully, and was like, wait, what? And Hardison then tells Roy they brought what he has. If we can just let the hostages go, they could talk this out. And was like, you don't understand. And then says it was the uh, like the other four. Hardison's like trying to talk Roy down. Then he like gets on his knees, stands behind his head, and was like, like, what are you doing? And then he's like. And I was like, I can do this so the situation and all that. And then, but then when he gets down with his head, hide his head, where he's like, like, what are you doing? And then he's like, you're one of them. And how she says, now. And the cops come in, go orders away to drop the gun. And was like, Bill, this is not what it looks like. So Harrison stands up and it gets a little cocky as they sing orders away to drop the gun and Royce on how they got all this wrong he needs to hear her. and then notices puts Arnold has like put it like one of the cuffs on him and he's like what are you doing you work for me and then Nate gets loaded onto the gurney and the cops help the hostages out and Bill's like then like you know boy if they needed money you could have just asked to come to me for a loan I was like I don't need it loan I got plenty of money then it's like the pizza box is gone. I was like, do you understand what he's saying? Because it's not making any sense. The way that, like, he was like, it's, like, it's my money. They got my damn money again. He said, like, like, what the hell are you talking about? And Roy reveals the money. It was in his briefcase. The bill then finds the briefcase. Underneath the desk where he had it under earlier in the beginning. Bill opens it and he finds some, I think it's like files or something. As well as multiple small baggies of crystal meth. Ours and whistles. He's just like, my God, Roy, what the hell have you gotten into? He was like, it's not mine. And Harrison, and then Harrison kind of basically gaslights Roy. By saying, like, like, it all makes sense now. The rational behavior, the nervous, the irritability. I was like, shut up. You're not even real FBI. I was like, but it's facial expressions. Harris Aldous is freaking king at facial expressions. True. Because there's like paranoid delusions, violent outbursts. Which he's implying it's all like the fact that like boys on meth. And where he starts yelling the heart since one of them and he's in on it. And Phil's like, in on what? With who? Roy says her pointing to Sophie who covers Nate's face with a hat. But the boy points out two people who take their caps off and it's not Derek and Michael. It's Parker and Hardison though they're wearing their clothes. Then they just walk past. And we see two EMTs again load up Nate and the ambulance and when they close the door this time when they close the door it's Michael and Derek. Which the hat on actually, Nate's face. Actually, you said it was. It's actually Elliot and Parker, not is it, Parker and Hardison. Is par- no, it was Parker and Hardison with the two people wearing Derek and Michael's clothes. No, it was Elliot. It was Elliot and Parker. Did mm-hmm. I say Elliot and Parker? I said it was Elliot oh. and Parker. Then mm-hmm. I got damn. <laughs> <laughs> I met Parker and Elliot. See what happens when I'm gone for two weeks. But I forget how to do this. 
You're welcome. But, and, but, thank you. The news that had on Nate's face was to explain that um, it was really Tim Standen because the day that they like shot that scene of Nate getting loaded up into the ambulance, uh, Tim had got caught in traffic and was late. But they still really? had to like that scene. So they ended up using Tim's stand in. And so, but the hat on the face ended up turning into this really great red herring because you're looking at like the per like the hat and you're like, okay, that must not be Nate. Like who's that underneath the hat? Because that's that must not be Nate. But then, which helps with the reveal when they look, and that it's Derek and Michael. So it turned into a really great red herring. And then we get a flashback to Parker and Elliot hiding behind the gurney and like start unbuttoning their EMT shirts. And as they were the EMTs who came in earlier. And Elliot and sparked like, for a third time. It's like, well, it's about time. Cause Nate will always be a bastard even when he's shot. So then it's Elliot hilarious. tells Michael and Derek to need their clothes. Parker's like, now. And Derek motions to Michael like, okay, give him your clothes. Which the only thing I was thinking about during this scene is just how fucking sweaty and gross those clothes were. True. <laughs> oh, like... I mean, Parker might not have cared as much because it's Parker. And she's used to being in hot, strange vents. So that wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> I'm sorry. My culture is gone. I'm sorry. But... I well, I mean, I guess Elliot, I guess, wouldn't have cared either. Because you see how fucking sweaty those military uniforms get. Yeah. Especially when they have, like, 100 freaking pounds of crap on them. <laughs> yeah, they have over 100 pounds of gear. <laughs> and the... The canvas that that those shirts, the blouses are made out of, are so not thick. Breathable. Yeah, not breathable at all. Yeah, it's like wearing spandex. Nothing yeah. breathes. So, but like, it's still like so fucking sweaty and gross. Like, I would need like three showers to feel clean after that. So the ambulance is showing away, then it stops in a sheet, and it, and like you can see the confusion, like with Derek. It's like, why are we stopped? Like you can see it in space, like why are we stopped? And then it's revealed that the ambulance driver is Ellen. You hug your son, and then Nate interrupts by saying, like. Yeah, this is all very heartwarming, but can you save it after the morphine drip? <laughs> <laughs> Derek apologizes, and Nate has a proud smile as he puts his hat on properly, and they drive off. So then back inside the bank, everyone's giving statements to the cops, and Elliot tells the cop, that like that boy just went berserk like he was up his meds or something we was going around 
then asked if the cops seen dog day afternoon and it and to write it down which dog day afternoon is a movie starring al pacino about amateur three amateur about a couple amateur bank robbers who go rob a bank and everything that could go wrong goes wrong That's literally what the movie's about. That's funny. There's another but, uh, bank heist or gone wrong. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I did see it, the trailer for it. It's like it's like there's actually like no money in the bank. Because it had like just gotten shipped out. They have hostages. They are too long. Cops are there, and it turns into this like sideshow. And there's a famous movie line of Al Pacino's where he just yells "Annika." So yeah, it. So, yeah, that's the reference. But it's interesting because the camera then zooms like past Roy and we see it's Sophie and we see Sophie's talking to another cop she's got a bottle of and now she's like I guess Carl I guess Carl thought he could talk some sense and met him I don't know why but he just kept telling him to shut up and then the camera camera zams back on back past Roy and then back onto Elliot and Elliot's like it plays on to the emotional saying Carl was just trying to be a hero. But Roy wasn't having it. Shot him where he stood. Cold. And his voice even breaks a little. Like there's a little like tremor in his voice. And then walks away. And then the camera zooms back on to Roy. Who's even getting more unhinged. You know, it's ridiculous. And Elliot wasn't even there. And apparently the direction for the steady cam operator for how they shot that is basically a figure eight. <laughs> so start on Christian, go past Roy, or good Cameron Elliot, go past Roy, go to Sophie, go back on Roy, then back on to Elliot. So yeah, that's how they did that. So then Roy tells Frank, Colin, and Fred again to say what really happened. Frank then corrects Roy, saying his name is Frank. And then, as you can tell, this is most definitely like one final fuck you to Roy. And Frank's like, it happened exactly as they said. Like, fuck you. <laughs> and, he could, and then, like, and then when he leaves, you can see Megan go up to to Frank and was like, way to go. Like, proud of him. And we start switching again and getting very irritated. Send their line, and they're all lying. They was stupid enough to tell the cops to look at the tapes. Because Harrison's like, ah, good idea. Then when Bill then shows Bill the security feed, which shows Nate walking to the bank, hands up, and Roy holding a gun on Nate, briefcase in the other hand. Then we get a flashback to before. Harrison went into the bank, and we see Harrison was digitally altering, altering the footage to frame Roy and to back up the story they were selling that Roy initiated the bank robbery, and also altering the footage so it looked like instead of having Michael hostage, Nate just shot, Roy just shot Nate in cold blood. And Bill's then like, pretty damn stuff, Roy, got you on the TV and everything. <laughs> That is such a small town, like, everybody knows everybody kind of thing. 
Yeah. Like, right. yeah, it's pretty damn instead. They got you on TV and everything. And Roy's also watching the footage. Was like, well, obviously they doctored it, you idiot. On the tape, you hear Sophie telling Roy that like Nate needs to go to the hospital. And we're telling Sophie that's not gonna happen until it gets his money. Hold up both the gun and the shotgun. Nate tells Roy a doctor might not be a bad idea. And was like, Oh, come on now, Bale. You know me. As another cop's like handcuffing him. Handcuffing He's like Roy. that's the problem. Which sets up it. the whole point. Which sets up the whole point of this episode is like getting the town to turn on Roy. And so the takeaway is Roy is like yelling, he is being set up. So he walks up to Hardison and tells him he's still a geek. And Hardison says he has his fist up like geek power, baby, stay strong. Which I guess is also propped by Aldis because he just left the camera running. Because they learn that if you just keep the camera running, they're bound to improv or put the button on a scene. Going back to and the Nigerian job after Nate and Sophie's. Why'd you text me six? I pushed something by mistake. Whoops. Okay. Six, <laughs> six what? So, and then, like, when you come, when Nate and Sophie are, like, having their moment, like, now you're really inside my head. And then it just all oh, just come to the chat like oh oh that was entirely improv because <laughs> they forgot all this is in the scene so back inside parker gets in the driver's seat of the back outside park gets in the driver's seat of the black car Bill tells Hardison that was a great thing he did. Step into a situation like that, totally defenseless. And then asks if all the FBI guys have cojones that big. All right, it's like, oh, no, we have another team coming to do the wrap up. Then he gets in and they drive off. And Hastings, Bill, Bill goes to the boss and he's like, we went along, show's over. As the real FBI pull up. Then we see an older gift be a guy who we find out is Taggart. And then the younger one, Nick Sweeten. <laughs> Which this is actually because this episode was supposed to be later in another episode, the wedding job was supposed to be before this episode. So the way they had originally made it, you were supposed to see Taggart and Nick Sweeten before in the wedding job which they have a bigger part in this is more of a cameo so like you're supposed to like go from there to then to, he to see them you'd be like oh it's these guys again kind of thing but because tnt changed the order it didn't work out like that but it kind of works either way, if I'm being honest. So McSween asks Taggart if he has any idea what's happening. And Taggart's like, <clears throat> just go along with it. Arnold then comes over and asks him for their help. They walk over to a van, open the trunk. And it's the meth heads all tied up in the back of the van. And funny as Bill's like, oh, would you look at that. The meth dealers. All without standard warrants. 
<laughs> so it's like, damn, we're good. <laughs> Decorative just put that sun glasses because they're cool. I do love them. I love how they're like, what one is like deputy director. I think Taggart said deputy director, and I think Sweden becomes like the head of like terrorism or something, like the head of counterterrorism or something like that in redemption. But they're like really high up now on the FBI, all because of the leverage D. <laughs> So cool. Back of the ambulance, Harson's driving. Elliot's at Nate's side, stitching Nate's shoulder up, wearing gloves. Nate's on the gurney. Sophie Parker on the other side, helping Elliot also gloved up because sanitation is important. And Sophie thinks Parker, he's like, like whatever. Sophie's like, no, it was an excellent performance. As she takes her glove off, Parker's like, huh, can act okay when I'm yelling at people and bossing them around. Which my mind went really dirty. I'm gonna let that go. <laughs> so if he says it's a good start, and he tells them that they have to make sure they get cash to the Dogado family. Danielle is in pain. Now it's like, settle down. You act like you've never been shot before. And then looks up at Sophie. Then Nate and Sophie shared a look. Because the first time Nate and Sophie met, they shot each other. There was supposed to be a reference to that flashback of Nate and Sophie shooting each other. But then as we find out in Redemption, that's the first time they met. Which I find hilarious still. So Nate's done like, so uh, pizza boxes, huh? And Harris looks back and is like, I know you could have done better. Nate's like, no, I couldn't have. I said, right off into the sunset. <laughs> and that I put, um, like, oh, Nate basically complimented Harness and saying, good job, buddy. I approve. You did. But I will say, <laughs> when Elliot's stitching up Nate and he's like, oh, quit complaining. It's like, I'm his so hand down. is so steady. Yeah, it's basically saying, telling him to quit complaining. His hand is so you steady. He's like, stitch up. it's like, how many times have you stitched yourself up due to an injury? But that was also kind of cute. It was. Well, hmm. But then again, it is Christian Kane. So. It is. So, final notes. I'm going to try and do a speed round of this because we're at three hour and 38 minute mark. So, I'm going to try and speed past these. So I must say we're going to take it down because they lost control of the people he owned and the team was able to turn his town against him was incredibly satisfying. He got what he deserved. Yes. I also get a more of Elliot's background with like stitching Nate up and caring for him. And also the trust they had at the trio to get him and Sophie out and to smile when he said they're the best. I just loved that. It was also cute. Get, it was, he loves them. He just doesn't want to admit it because he's a bastard. <laughs> also, we get more so we got more Sophie and Parker mentor mentee relationship, and Harrison and Nate's mentor mentee relationship. And this is, as I said earlier, this is our first introduction of the current characters, Taggart and Sweden. Who are FP, the FBI guys that the team will go to throughout the series when they need a little extra help? And as I said, the rest of the FBI is due to the team. And there's also a leverage commentary joke 
that you know when you do your hostage episode early on you're jumping the shark so that's why they decided to do it first i mentioned that at the beginning and i had also said about this being the first episode shot and they came back from shooting the pilot and the brighter strike it's also the first time we see nate or we see sophie breaking cover because this is the this and it's because nate got hurt because you see, Sophie's pretty damn good at keeping recover. But this is the first time we see her breaking cover. And it was like a switch, a switch in her in mm-hmm. her mind of like being flipped off because she saw that the guy that she loved was being hurt. Yeah. And she was that her character was. She was Nate Sophie. instantly turned off her character and became Nate Sophie. That's cute. Yeah, it is. But that I still you, am like when she yeah, it like, shows you how far her. they came. Hmm. It shows you how far but she how came far they the still have to go to. Yeah. But it shows you how far she came as a person at this point. Yeah. Really cool. So I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and also they show this episode in six days and they usually shoot it in seven as they were way over budget already. Oh uh oh. Uh oh. Hang on. What on? What? Hold on. Yeah. Hang on, I'm sorry. Alex just left. <laughs> Hang on. Sorry, my lips have been like really chapped even though it's like hot out. Come on. Hold on. Let me. Let's see if I can. I Alex's laptop glitched. Hang on, she's coming back. I think. There we go. Alright, there we go. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what the heck. You're fine. Like, you sure you didn't hit a button? No, I didn't touch oh. anything. It just That's usually my weird. thing. That's weird. It's usually my thing, hidden buttons. <laughs> so yeah, they shot this episode in seven, in six days. Cause they, they usually shoot them in seven because they were over budget, which actually did help, like, with to get the fast pacing of this episode, because it is kind of like boom, 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 boom. From like the moment the robbery starts, it's nothing but fast paced. Like, like robbery happens. Yeah, it's one thing after the next. Yeah, and it's kind of it kind of reminds me. It kind of reminded me of uh, Hyde a little bit because how quick it turned. Uh, yeah. Yes. Which yeah, actually, I was going to mention that bank robbery, <laughs> Christian Kane. So, I think I might have talked about this movie already uh, in one of these episodes, but for those of you who don't know, Hyde is a 
movie starring Christian Kane and Rachel Miner as like this Bonnie and Clyde bank robber. Modern day movie. Bonnie and Clyde. Like a modern day Bonnie and Clyde, yeah. And after a bank robber goes wrong, Christian Kane's character, Billy, gets arrested. And when he's getting released, Betty breaks him out. And so his love, Betty. And they're, they're adorable, but in a psychotic kind of way. Because like at the op- like op- it opens with like Billy getting Betty a big stack of pancakes and like getting all the syrup like all the butter and syrup she wants and they agree that like after this truck tra- or after like or that they're gonna like go settle down basically. I think is what that conversation when they're at the diner is about. But then they see like the cops about, so then like it turns really quickly to like them taking over the diner and then like just going out, like surrounded by cops, gun please guns blazing. Then it gets to like Billy getting or Billy getting arrested and he then when Betty crashes a truck into his, the prison truck that's transferring him. And they, uh, there's a lot of scenes <laughs> with some implications I'm not gonna discuss here. But if you look at IMDB, you'll get the idea what those scenes are but uh basically this whole thing is like billy's trying to stop because he's like made his penance and he like he wants to go straight but betty just wants her billy back and it has one of my favorite lines i think i've ever heard is baby i would walk through hell on sunday for you (laughs) i love that line and but basically they're on this like road trip to get there to get some cash that that billy had stashed after their last bank robbery and so they go to this like church then that's where it turns like a bit more paranormal after having <clears throat> on the uh down counter <laughs> <laughs> that scene was fucking hot though true that was fucking hot but then i uh, Actually, come to think of it, after that, it kind of, like, all goes to hell. Pretty much. Because then, like, Betty goes to, like, investigate this church that Billy might have stashed the cash in. And, like, weird shit starts happening. And I'm pretty sure they make out in a church. <laughs> and then uh, after that they like they go back to like the truck because Billy's fixing up the truck and Betty's like freaked the fuck out she's like let's just get the cash and go but they can't go anywhere because the truck broke down. And so then like all of a sudden 
Billy's sister comes out of nowhere, like, scared. She's been, like, like, tortured. But Billy's, like, nowhere to be seen. I know Billy was, like, freaking out, like, he's like, who did this to you, Jenny? And then, uh, Billy goes to run off to seemingly, like, find who kidnapped Jenny. And then all of his, and then, like, Jenny says, like, something about, like, Like, it was Billy or something. Or is this something that implies, like, it's all fake? And that's where it, like, takes the most turn, psychotic turn ever, because then it's freaking Billy torturing Betty because the uh, because of the abuse he suffered as a kid to protect Jenny. And it's just freaking insane. But then it ends like with the crash, with the reveal that the whole time Betty's actually been dead. <laughs> because it's sad though. Yeah, yeah. It's just like because you couldn't live without Betty. Kind of okay to look really sad. Yeah, because she died in that shootout. It was like, it, but like the way he says it too, like it was just too much for Betty. That he survived, but she didn't. And he had basically like dreamed of seeing his Betty again. That was cute. But then, like. A truck cash crashes into the prison truck and it's like okay what the fuck happened <laughs> oh it's a fucked up movie but, but it's Rachel written Mott really well is. But Christian's ability to go from playing like charming like when he's talking like when he's at the diner with Betty to like men saying with Yeah, to like crazy and then like desperate. And then like psychotic. Because even at, like, when I was watching that scene, I was like, oh, I don't like this. Like, I don't like this at all. Like, I don't like this side of you, no. Don't do that to Rachel. But yeah, it was... It was cool to I'm see how to watch quickly they can. Me too. I'd like to watch it again. I keep saying I'm going to rewatch it, but then I never freaking rewatch it. All right. Today went on. We could talk about Hide Another Day. <laughs> oh. Basically, all right. Continuing on with some final notes I have. As I said, it was basically 110 degrees outside when they were shooting this. So all the sweat's real. They also shot this in like an abandoned bank that was being renovated, but there were people living above them. So they had to like pay, the, pay like one of the tenants off to like get them off the property so they could shoot without like noise of like walking. So those are all my notes. Do you have any final notes? Um, I think that was it basically from mine but i will say i loved how i don't want to word this um just like the camera shots were really cool 
and two, how quick Nate became from like cocky to protective and then back again. Mm-hmm. Which is really funny. But yeah, my favorite my favorite bit besides the what smells like crank and scream like a girl. That is my favorite part. It's just so funny because only Christian could pull off a line like that, like a Batman line like that. Oh no. Hey, this one's a crank, it's gonna take a girl. Yeah. <laughs> right answer. But Stay my, in the my that, yeah, yeah. My second favorite scene was when he's stitching up Nate <laughs> and he's like, quit complaining. <laughs> I had it's- yeah, when I after I rewatched this and I got my notes and stuff, I had a dream literally of oh, yeah. it was me that he was stitching up, and I'm like, I flinched and I pulled away from him, and I ended up elbowing him in the ribs because he moved to pick something up off the ground. I elbowed him so hard that he yelped, and I'm like, the hell kind of like too hard. Well, I moved because I was trying to readjust on the gurney because I was sliding mm-hmm. down because it was tilted too far because I'm small. And he went to pick something up off the ground and off the floor of the ambulance and I slid and I elbowed him right in the shoulder. Right here. I'm trying to Hard. think what, what like my last dream was about. Like it really didn't I think it was actually I'm currently working on a librarian's fic because I finally started. I, I finally, I'm done with librarian, so now I understand the references and I watched all the movies. I actually don't like the movies. I like the TV show better. Uh-uh. See, my whole my thing with like movies is sometimes, like you could watch a movie and you could be like, oh, that movie was designed. To get nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. But then you look at some movies and it's like, oh, those ones are just for fun and aren't meant to be Oscar winners. They're just meant to be something you can enjoy. Which is more the category I'd put the librarians movies in. Like the kind of corny but that's what makes them fun, and that's what makes them good, you know? Yeah, true. I like the first one where we meet Noah while and we see how he, be- he became the librarian. Yeah. And the fact that he threw away the letter originally, yes. like, discarded, he's like, I don't need this. But then was, uh, yeah. like, tracked down in a way was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, was, it, was it the Serpent Brotherhood? Did no, that? it was actually Judge- Jenkins. She can track him no, down. It was Judson. It was Judson. Yeah, Judson tracked him down. It's like, we need you to come. I need you to come with me now. And mm-hmm. he turned and looked, and the Serpent Brotherhood was tr- running towards him to try to hurt him. Ninjas? In Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I have a funny story time. Funny story time. So, uh, before, this is the week, this was a couple weeks ago, so it was um, before I moved and I was going to a birthday party for uh, a family friend, one of my mom's girlfriends. And just before that, I had started watching the librarians so i watched the pilot episode which is called and the crown of king arthur well in that episode when we first meet jake he's got the cowboy hat on and he is flirting with the main bad guy's busey Because Lamia is kind of abusey. Because she's in charge of basically like. Because she was tasked with killing Jake. And what's funny is he like says like what her tattoo translates to. 
and he's flirting with her like now what's this pretty thing like you doing with the tattoo about the end of the world on her arm and she like like says her name's Samia and you must be Jake Stone he's like what and then she freaking like kicks him back pulls out a sword <laughs> <clears throat> which why he would pull out a sword in the middle of a country bar <laughs> but I guess that's no different than Eve drawing her gun in a bar like but anyway so I watched that scene of Jake flirting and I, I went to this party it was a surprise party for my friend, for Momo's friend, and there was the bartender there, and I had I had been a bit cocky because I had that I had that Jake Stone confidence, and I did I did good in pool because I played pool before I did this with my brother and his one buddy. And another buddy. So we were playing pool. And I, I like I did pretty good. And was like proud of myself. Which got the confidence up. And I was also thinking of like. Jake. So that boosted the confidence up. So then as everyone was going to like. Go listen to the band. I was performing at this restaurant bar. The bartender was uh, cleaning up our tables. And I flirted with her. <laughs> she had like nose piercings and tattoos. It was hot, okay, she was hot. So I complimented him. And, and then my My brother made the joke, like, like, you flirting with the bartender? And I was like, she was hot. <laughs> so, yes, Christian Kane gained me the confidence to flirt with a hot bartender. No piercing and tattoos. Didn't score. Cause I didn't get a number, but I felt good. <laughs> it was funny. It was, uh, what, what were you texting me when uh, I told you about it? And the NSFW Christian Kane discord group chat. <laughs> Do you remember? Nope. <laughs> but I know it was embarrassing. Oh, you basically said, because it was because you're like, didn't you learn from Christian? Well, number seven, I was like, she was hot. The bartender was hot. Okay, she was cute. <laughs> and you're like, wait, flirted, but like what? <laughs> and I was like, uh, so I explained it. Like I told you what happened, and I said that like that Jake Stone confidence. And you're like, wait, hold on, I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. We're on chat. Back it up. Back it. Back it. And you're like, I know I was saying about it. I was like, I feel that Jake's so confident, goose. <laughs> And then you're like, you haven't learned a damn thing from Alex, have you? <laughs> oh, yeah. And you're like, no, take notes. I was like, look, the bartender was hot in case you know it's good tattoos. I like hot women. I'm sorry. And you're like, wait, bartender? The hell did I miss? <laughs> and I was like, uh, last night I told you about the party I was at. And you're like, oh, right. And I was like, well, Jake's jump of confidence up and it may have tried flirting with the bartender. <laughs> Just three laughing emojis. Oh my god, no, you didn't. You did not learn from CK's house rules. 
sweetheart, I thought you knew better. I was like, to be fair, I should have learned because the last time I saw Jake flirt, it was Jake flirting with Lamia and she pulled a sword on him. So, then they're like, I know, see, flirting could kill you. I was like, she liked harmless. <laughs> <laughs> like so does a wasp. Don't touch your book pets cover on. It's like true. Cause that's how Alex got poisoned. <laughs> and you said like I did murder mittens pop in my head. Now I was like, oh my god, I am Alex Walker. It's <laughs> like I'm Alex Walker, oh my god. Then I would I was like, so would that make you Kai or Ernesto? And you're like, which one? I said, probably Kai. You're like, hey, wait, never mind. I'll take it. <laughs> I was like, because you yell at me when I do something stupid. <laughs> I forgot about that. Like, try flirting with the bartender. <laughs> yep. I am so red faced right now because of you. <laughs> me too. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you want to like mention about this episode? Or anything um, else you want to like? This is one of my this is one of my favorites. It's mine too. Just because so, how like goofy it it gets at it, some points. It's it like ridiculously yeah. stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Which I loved. All right. All right. So I think I am gonna start to end this thing. So once again, I'd like to thank our parent company, Napco.org. I'd like to thank our electrical consultants, WestPASystems.com. There's my goodness, sorry. There's my website, chaosintelacting.com. There's my Twitter, MissMovieFan underscore 67. There is my TikTok, MovieFan underscore 67. Which I did actually post some TikToks recently, and I've been trying to do more of that. So, yeah. You can follow Alex on Instagram at alexcooper7241. And you can follow Alex on Twitter at alex the underscore alleycat. And also, you can look her up on TikTok also under alex the alleycat. And it's like, it, it gets crazy. Some of my it does. stuff that I do on there gets crazy. Mm -hmm. So, so the much next fun. time, yes. All right, so the next time you will see us, we, so the next podcast episode, we are going to be talking Almost Paradise, Season 1, Episode 4, Pistol Whip. I love that Which was CK at peak fanboy behavior. <laughs> you, he was fanboying. True. Like, hardcore fanboy. <laughs> he didn't even try so to hide I think it. He had, I think he had a bit of a man crush on August Crow. True. Yeah, that's a later episode. Anyways. So yeah, next episode is we're gonna be talking about Almost Paradise season one uh, season one episode four Pistol Whip. And then the next leverage episode we're gonna be talking about it is the stork job. Which we actually will learn how Christian Kane got the nickname fucking Oklahoma. And we get some cute pretzels moments. Oh, love my pretzels. I want my babies back in season two of Redemption. I know. Yeah, there's, there hasn't really been any redemption news. Not yet. Hopefully we'll have some for you in the next episode.
Yes, fingers crossed. Legs crossed. You can't see it, but they're crossed, I promise. Yeah, fingers crossed that we get something here soon. So yeah, I think that is going to end the episode today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next episode.